welcome to the live stream we are off our holiday and we're back how's it going guys i can only see twitch chat right now but soon one day youtube chat will become available to me very soon i promise uh how's life how's everyone all good all gucci bucci where the tunes go the tunes went uh where my dulcet tones now reside because it is I, Potato McWhiskey, and I'm here today to talk to you about a game called Old World. That's right. It's back by popular demand. The people asked for Civilization VI, but we played Civ VI yesterday. And uh, Old World launched on Steam there the other day. So I was like, you know what? Let's play some Old World. Let's do it. Old world, maximum difficulty. We'll see how far we can get. Um, no, that's the... Ooh, almost revealed my Discord. Now that one's dangerous. Had Steam keys and everything there. Whew. Have you tried New World? Nah. 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 Just to be honest, again, I've just completely lost interest in MMOs that have launched after 2010. It's just, it's just, they're just, they just tend to be bad. Oh, I forgot to close my window and there's a man a couple of houses down who has decided that today, the day I come back, the day I come back from my holiday, he has decided to get a gardener who will landscape his entire garden. That man has been out there with a motorized bush trimmer for the last four hours. I understand the need to get your garden done. It's just unfortunate that I work from home. All right, I'll be right back. i got to close my window to block out the sound. Close the window. Hey, Davey. You my baby girl? Hey. Huh. Good girl. I was talking to my rabbit. <sighs> All MMOs are trash. True. No jury would convict. No, no. <sighs> I feel like Potato is completely ignoring Twitch chat gold what is the gardener hot though i mean I'm just, there's somebody for everybody out there morning potato mug whiskey i'm trying to figure out why i can't get into games like the endless series but not civ any thoughts um how do you feel when you play those games evil vacuum what is the feeling you have when you play them uh like what's like what makes you stop playing civ that's my question. Because if you can get into like the endless games, but not Civ, we need a little bit more context if we're going to talk about that. As a landscaper, my lifelong dream is to mow content creators' lawns. I get frustrated by the mid game, I think. Evil Vacuum, I'm sorry to say this, but you're the problem. You've got a weak mind, you don't have the stamina. To push through. You don't have what it takes to get through the churn. You're the problem. Alright, vacuum. Uh but it's just like, I mean, like it's a it's actually like i you know, jokes aside, it's actually a pretty normal feeling. Most people get bored by the mid game. Um arguably you're playing the game correctly by playing to the renaissance era for three hours and then turning it off and going to sleep like that is a totally valid way to play civilization and endless legend because i i got nearly 100 hours out of civilization when i was a teenager by doing that and i thoroughly enjoyed it i would have that frustration but what i what i did to overcome that was i just said to myself i'm not allowed 
to start a new game until I finish this one. And then I started enjoying the mid game because I started learning to optimize and the frustration went away because I learned what the correct moves are. And then it was just about like, oh, click, 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 click. I do this, 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 this. Uh, the problem is that what often happens is uh, you get to the mid game. Here's what happens. Uh, I, I got to draw you guys a picture. So like, uh, you're like, early game, you're like making decisions. And these decisions are really, really good. Okay. They're like increasing. They're increasing the velocity of your empire. You're getting more science, you're getting more food. But then you get to the mid game, right? And then hindsight. Hind. Hindsight kicks in. And you start like looking back to here and you're like damn I should have done X where X is whatever thing you didn't do right and then you'll you'll end the game and you'll start a new game and you'll you know you'll potter along and you'll be like ah oh, yes this is the perfect game and then you'll get to about here and your game will go like this. And this is where someone declared war on you. And then you're like, oh, fuck. All right, back to the start again. All right, we're going to, we want to, the problem is you, the player, you're looking for a perfect game. You're not going to get a perfect game. You have to, this is the most important one. Okay. When you get that hindsight feeling, push through. Because you may actually learn that this decision that you want to change actually was optimal. And now you're in the money. So you have to. You have to push through the hindsight decision. Sometimes you get war declared on you. Oh well. It's game over. But uh, I think this is. Uh, I think this is like based and true. And accurate. That's my opinion anyway. Is there anyone in chat. Who identifies with the stuff I just drew. Right. Anybody. Does it, does what I say make sense? That's exactly my weakness. Yep. Either perfect or nothing. Yep. Exactly. You got to That's part of the problem because if you think about Civ, Civ games, they're like God games. Here's the problem again, like these kind of games, they're like God games, but we're weak. We have, we have small little pea brains, okay? I'll put some wrinkles on it for you, okay? We have small... It looks a bit more like an onion or a testicle. We have small little pea brains, okay? We can't handle the scope of, like, managing every single decision in the game. So what you want emotionally is for the game to deliver exactly what's in your head. And when that game delivers something else, you're disappointed. You want the game to do everything you want for you. But that's... You, you fundamentally, you've approached the game from the wrong, wrong aspect. The big brain, the giga brain, mega brain thing to do, okay? Is just to say yes to everything that happens in the game. You don't care where it goes, okay? You don't care. The only thing that matters is that you're an absolute chad and you're just having fun. That's how you play 4X games. Oh my god, you can't see my drawing. I drew a drawing. This is, a sm this, this is the small brain. You want the game to, d to just hand you the perfect game on the platter. But the reality is these games aren't, aren't designed to give you the perfect game. And you don't have the mental fortitude to go through and pick what every single tile in the game has on it and choose exactly how events go. You want your cake. You want to have your cake and eat it too. You want a game to play itself for you. And you know what? The game's not going to play itself for you. You need to just embrace the giga brain and let the game play itself out and let it go where it may okay it's like a giga brain octopus over here all right <clears throat> which is better old world or humankind i think they're just very different games it's hard to comp it's really really hard to compare games that are different in that in such a stark way like they're 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 impossibly different oh, i need to open up stream lab Ugh. What's the faction you had the funnest time playing? Eh. 
I usually just have the faction I'm currently playing is usually the one I'm having the most fun playing. I don't have like a. I mean, if if it's Civ Six, it's probably Khmer. Come I. Why is the old world uh, main map menu covered in caterpillars? It's a really good question. I actually don't know. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, let me. Can I get a sound check, please? Is that game? The game seems real quiet. Let me. No, I didn't want to resume. Fuck. Oh. Are you starting a new game or continuing? I'm starting a new game. I accidentally hit resume because I'm a moron. I didn't hear from Old World until this stream popped up. Yeah, well, it's available on Steam now. Um, this this was like a test game I was doing on my own. I was farting around. Um, oh, hey, Nick. Actually. Come on, R.O.P. Just had a crazy Khmer game. My capital reached 47 pop by the time I won. The domination victory. Nice. Single player. Uh, we'll start a new game. Which faction would you guys like to see me play as? Is Old World the one that fucking dies when you open the in-game wiki? Pfft, don't know. Uh, no idea. Doesn't sound familiar to me. Do we want to... We're just, we're just going to pick, right? We're not going to look at their abilities until we pick one, right? We've got Assyria. We've got Babylonia. We've got Carthage. We've got Egypt. We've got Greece. We've got Persia. And we've got Rome. What do you guys want to see? Anyone but Rome. Okay, I'm on board with the not Rome because I've already played Rome before. I'm okay with a random as well. But if it picks Rome, I'm re-rolling. A lot of people saying random. Random re-roll Rome. All right, we'll random and re-roll Rome. So we're going to be playing on the hardest difficulty, which is the great, a random map script on a medium map size. Let's go. Who do we get? We've got a lot to explain in this game. This game is very complicated. It's very... All right, so we are Cyrus, the founder. We are Persia. Um, and we play as King Cyrus. You can see here uh, on the tooltip, uh, it says King Cyrus the Founder, brackets you. And then there's a whole bunch of information about this leader. He's a male. He's age 26. He's the leader of Persia. His cognomen is the founder. Your cognomen is kind of like your, you know, Cyrus the Builder, Cyrus the Great, Cyrus the Conqueror. Depending on what you do in the game, this name will change. Uh, he is a hero class guy. And heroes have their own whole bunch of stats here. They can serve as generals or agents. They get plus 50 military points per unit killed. So these military points can be used for various things. We'll talk about those a little bit later. Uh, because he's a hero, he gets extra three courage, which gives him some stat bonuses here. You can see here, courage three. It gives you varying uh, benefits. If you're a general, it gives your units plus 10% attack. If you're a governor of a city, it gives the city 20% more training. And if you're the king, it'll give you 24 training. So, uh, Nesta tool. Nesta tooltips. A lot, lot of concepts here to tackle. Let's not just worry about it too hard, okay? Basically, King Cyrus is our king. We're playing as King Cyrus. We're in control. He's really, really good at taking control of units and fighting uh, because he is a hero. And he wants to get kills uh, and he wants to and, and he's good at getting kills so that's that's the important thing that we need to know about king cyrus he is our leader he's giving us a lot of training which is what you use for military ah so persia in the old world you are cyrus the king of kings and ruler of persia named king upon your father's death you have had to fight for independence from other rulers to whom your ancestors paid tribute even seizing the throne from your grandfathers Astyages the Schemer. That's this guy right here is my grandfather. He was a schemer. The last king of Media. Finally free and at the head of the United Nation of Persia. You are positioned to lead your people into the dangers and opportunities of the old world. It's kind of funny that me and Nick were talking about uh, Iran last night and I'm playing Persia now. It's kind of funny. Just a funny, and he's in chat. Like it's just a funny little coincidence. Uh, the existing 
Civilizations of this old world do not yet know the strength and splendor of Persia, but they will learn. Select your settler and found your capital city. You'll also decide which family manages your first city, gaining their advantages immediately. All right. Found our capital. Welcome to Old World. Look how beautiful this map is. If you're a fan of the Civilization 5 graphics, you absolutely should like this. Now, I believe I can turn off the hex grids and stuff like that, depending. Uh, let's see, there's a way. I don't remember how to do it. But uh, I actually like having them on, personally. Is there a way? Um, hex grids. How do I turn off the hex grids? Just so I can show people, because some people don't like them. I don't remember how to do it. So this game is a little bit like Civilization uh, was set in like the ancient and classical, and maybe like early medieval era and uh was basically had a baby with a game by crusader kings 3 also look at the absolute giga size of these crabs dude they are ready to invade my city jesus christ and these horses oh my god this horse could like kick down the walls of a city dun, 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 dun. i don't remember how the crab brave song goes uh, but this is our settler now uh, unlike in other Forex games, in order to settle a city, you have to settle the city on a city site. A city site is this collection of green tiles here. When you have a settler selected, they'll generally look like these kind of like tribalistic, you know, kind of like semi-settled tiles. And we can't, because this is our very first settler, we actually can't move off this. We've got to pick where is the city center actually going to go. And, you know, this has some consequences because where you put the city center changes how your borders will look. You'll see that kind of faint red line is moving around depending on which tile I decide to put my borders on. Like, for example, if I were to settle on any of these three tiles, these horses over here won't be in my initial borders. But if I step one tile to the right, then the horses would be in my initial borders. So that kind of appeals to me, stepping one tile to the right here, uh, getting access to these horses very early feels nice to me but you'll also see that there's this little seven and a scroll on this tile and that's actually probably the most important mechanic in this game this is the most important mechanic in the entire game and that is uh, the order mechanic basically every action you are going to take in this game takes an order and what that means is uh, you could have 100 units, but if you only have 10 orders, you can only move those units, like 10 of those units. Like, that's it. You, you, just, you, you just can't move units if you don't have enough orders. So there's a sort of natural limitation built into the game that prevents, you know, like in the, in the late game of Civ, right? If you have, you know, 500 units in Civilization VI, every single one of those units is going to be like, my lord, I need orders, and you have to tell them either to wait or move or go to sleep. In this game, you don't have that. The number of orders you'll be taking every turn is capped at this number right here. Right now, I can take six. I can do six moves per turn. Now, this number will get bigger as the game goes on. It's really, really cool. Think of this as like ruler mana. It's like my power proje projection. It's like the bureaucracy. It's like how good are my officers? Am I able to tell a guy, hey, listen, go move that army over here and attack that guy? Like, do I have the bureaucracy necessary to like carry that out? Now, playing as Persia, we actually get some interesting bonuses. If I hover over here, you can see here, we get plus 50% harvest production, which means, uh, which is basically what scouts can do when they step on unclaimed resources. They can harvest a little bit. So that's something we might want to consider doing. Uh, we also get a 25% cost reduction for ranged units, and we get extra orders from pastures. So things like these uh, horses, I believe. If I go here, horses, they are improved by pastures, and they give orders so something to keep in mind i believe goats are also improved on a pasture so starting with two pastures here is pretty good so as persia uh we have a few advantages we start with iron working trapping and husbandry we also have some unique buildings and two unique units now one of the other parts of being persia is that we have these four families so each family has a role in the game right so the riders here if i hover over this the riders are a military family 
Their first city will be able to build mounted units like war elephants or horsemen without having the associated resources. Rider cities are always connected, which makes riders a good choice for locations that would be harder to connect by roads. Connection is kind of a later game mechanic we'll talk about. If It's sort of like an all roads lead to Rome type thing. If your cities are connected to your capital city by a road, you get an advantage. People who've played Civ V will understand that mechanic. It's a cool mechanic. It makes sense. And it's, it's fairly straightforward, fairly reasonable, fairly understandable. Uh, then we have the Mithranid, Mithranid Hunters. The Hunters are a military and growth family. Their ranged units fight better in your territory and all camps and nets have double output for Hunters. Uh, this makes Hunters very effective near resources like game, fish and crabs. So we actually have two copies of crabs here, so maybe Hunters are the right choice here. Uh, the Arsakid clerics. The clerics are entirely focused on religion. Founding the first cleric city will automatically found a religion. The cities gain increased yields from religious buildings and have lower discontent. And uh, uh, cleric cities are the only ones that can be built on sand. So that's something to consider. Uh, we have statesman cities. They are good at boosting your orders and civics. Family cities will produce more civics as the family's opinion of you improves. And statesman cities are good at producing specialists. So that kind of gives us an overview of every single one of these guys. But what we could do is we can actually hover over the family and look at what they do. So here's the riders. This was the militaristic family here. You can see here in all of their family cities, they get plus two red production. This is military production. It's called training. It's just it's red. Therefore, military production. Uh, their cities are always connected to the capital. New mounted units start with Saddleborn. Uh, why can't I? Huh, it won't let me do the nested tooltip thing. Huh. What are the... Why is it? Oh, there we go. Now it's letting me do it. Okay. Saddleborn gives mel uh, Saddleborn gives you fifty percent defense against melee units. So their uh, their cavalry are really resistant to spearmen and melee infantry in general. Uh, now the special thing is their family seat, which is the very first city you settle of a family. They can always build uh, mounted units without the strategic resource. And when we settle the city, we gain a scout. Now the scout is important because a scout has the ability to harvest. Um, which, remember, we're playing Persia, and Persia gets a 50% bonus towards harvesting. So if we want to get some early resources and do a lot of scouting, uh, maybe settling the riders is a good choice. Now, the other option here is maybe a little bit more of an economic one. They are also a militaristic um, start, because they also start with an extra two uh, military production, but they're more of a ranged unit sort of thing. Um, their range units start with Sentinel, which gives them 20% combat strength in both offense and defense. You can tell it's offense and defense because it's a pair of swords uh, behind a shield, which means that it's good on the attack and de defense. If it's only attack, you'll see a sword, and if it's only defense, you'll see a shield. So this is combat. This is 20% combat strength in just my territory. My range units are stronger. Now, the other really, really powerful thing here is that their camps and nets get you 100% uh, output which is really damn good. Uh, they also have the family seat ability to do a hunt. Hunt is basically just a way to get extra growth in your city. It's basically a way to turn your civic and your production time into growth. Uh, when you found the seat, you'll also get a benefit of iron, stone, and wood. And you'll notice that we start with no resources here. It's just kind of dangerous. Hard mode. Maximum difficulty. Now we also have the clerics. These are a little bit more straightforward. Their cities get unhappy slower. That's what that minus one means. Uh, so their cities get a little bit unhappy, a little bit slower. Uh, they can build urban improvements on sand. But we're not near desert, so that's not very useful. Monasteries and temples have a... Oh, what's going on there? Excuse me. Uh, monasteries and... I wish it would... Yeah, there it is. Monasteries and temples give you extra output. Monasteries and temples are good for culture gain and stuff like that. And they have a 50% disciple production time so they can spread their religion very good. Now, religions are hard to get. And having 
the seat of a religion in your empire is pretty powerful. We could we could be the very first person in the game to have a religion. It's a good move. It's a good option. Do you think most developers can beat their game on hardest difficulty? Not not a chance. Uh, most developers probably beat their games on normal and like mildly above normal difficulty. But I would I would be very surprised if most developers actually play their games on the highest difficulty. They typically rely on more hardcore players to give them feedback on how things feel, and then they'll kind of tweak things to make those players happy. Um, it's like you got to remember, like a, a game developer team is made up of people who love games, but they also have jobs. So like they are also normal people. Yes, they play a lot of games and do a lot of games. But that doesn't mean necessarily that they're like incredibly good at them. You know, someone who's an artist doesn't dedicate 40 hours a week to playing games like I do. Is religion strong in this game? Religion is powerful, yes. Uh, then we also have the statesmen. These are good for giving you extra orders. They give you extra civics as well, which is like your legal production. It's a way for you to uh, build a more urbanized city. Uh, they also have decree, which is a way to get even more orders. And they also, when you found the city, they get a treasury, which gives you a little bit of gold and an extra 400 civics upon settling. Now, in my opinion, the we, there, there's kind of... Each of these choices is valid. Here's the thing. Each of these choices is very valid. Getting that extra scout early is pretty powerful. Very, 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 very powerful. Now, here's the thing. If I look at these crabs, these crabs, when they're improved, would give us two growth and five food. So if we double that, they'd be worth four growth and ten food. And that would let us build workers really fast out of my capital city. So if I wanted to go more in a defensive and economic direction, I would probably pick the hunters, right? I would pick the, pick the hunters. If I wanted to go more defensive, their range units are good at defense. They'll kickstart me with a ton of food and a ton of growth, um, which will allow me to build a lot of workers and spread my cities and, you know, improve my things. If I wanted to go a little bit more exploratory and aggressive, I would maybe go for the Sassanid Riders. Um, this would give me an extra scout, which would give me more ability to explore the map. However, we don't have a huge amount of orders, but we are playing Persia, so... Scouts are more valuable than you might otherwise consider playing another civilization. So this is also a valid choice. I think with the fact that we have two crabs in our capital city here, I feel like the hunters kind of beats out the riders. This is just more reliable resources um, and it doesn't take that many orders to get them online. Now the clerics are another really interesting choice because getting a religion is really powerful. Uh, so just just the fact that the clerics are here is really, really powerful. And I really feel like the statesmen just aren't a very good choice here. Maybe as a second or third city, the statesmen make sense, but not as a first city. And here's the thing. We can only ever pick three of these. So I'm thinking... Um, what are these? These are goats. So they go on pastures. We get extra benefits from pastures anyway. I, I, I feel like the economic play is to go for the hunters. Uh, those are goats down here. Goats you build a pasture on, and when you improve them, they give you two food, five, or two, two, two growth and five, five food. Sea resources are so good, give lots of growth, which enables you to train civilian units fast. Yes. I'm thinking I move one tile down here, so I'll spend an order, and then I settle a city. I think I settle in place um, with either the Hunters or the Clerics. And I feel like the Hunters give me, with the stronger range units, the better chance to survive the early game against AIs. Now, keep in mind, we're playing on the hardest difficulty, so I think the AIs start with seven cities. Now that we've settled the city, we get to pick our technology. Uh, rather than show you this, what I'll do is... Yeah, okay, I'll, I'll talk about this, actually. So this is how research is done. So anybody who's played Stellaris might be familiar with this system. Basically, every time that you complete a technology or get a tech choice, uh, there's like a hand full of cards that the game draws, and it pulls out three cards. It gives you three of your choices, depending on what I pick. Uh, and, th and then you, you pick from that, right? And then whatever you don't pick gets put on the discard pile, and then you have to shuffle through your entire deck of cards again, before 
the technologies you didn't pick show up again. So this choice is actually pretty significant. Like, it might be that I really want shrines. I don't know why it's doing this thing where it, like, won't let me hover over things. It's, like, very obnoxious. But the problem is, I really want these shrines of a terrace, right? But they cost stone. So that means I actually really need to get quarries if I want to do that. Um, and it's the sort of same thing with treasuries here. Treasuries also cost stone. So the only real choice that I feel like I have here is going for stone cutting um, in order to be able to get more stone income. Now there is an entire tech tree that we could talk a little bit about. Uh, if I go to the mini tree, it'll just simplify things. So the green techs are technologies that I have. Red techs are technologies that could appear in my, my hand draw. And blue techs are techs that have appeared. So there's actually a lot we have to consider here. Um, what we can do here is also select techs that we want to research. Like let's say I wanted to, I don't know, let's say I wanted to rush cataphracts. Every time a tech that leads to cataphracts appears, it'll have this little green targeted symbol. Uh, maybe I can show that by clicking on sovereignty. You can see both of these guys now have this green symbol. So when I go back to my hand draw, it'll tell me this is something that I've targeted and this is a prerequisite for something I want to go for. So that's just something to keep in mind. There's a whole bunch of like UI and cool things that you can do in this game. So you lose those options forever. You don't lose them forever. They just, they come back around. It takes a while for those cards to be drawn again. They come back around. Yeah, the AI, the AI starts with seven cities. Uh, the AI starts, maybe it's five cities maybe? I don't remember. The AI starts with like five to seven cities and 100% production in like every resource or something crazy like that. I don't, I don't remember. Um, and you can, you can still win that disadvantage. Now, personally, I think that unlocking slavery is pretty important because it gives you plus five orders per year. Um, and also we need to unlock two, we need to unlock two laws because there's a building here that we can build with our builders called the garrison. And the garrison is very unique because it gives you 0 0.1 orders. So that means you can do half an order, ex you ha one extra, like half an action every turn extra by building a garrison in exchange for two stone. But it also uh, allows you to put a governor in the city and governors give cities like really, really big benefits. Uh, I wish I could show you this. You'll have to just take my word for it that, that it, it's really valuable. So yeah, I think, I think technologically, um, stone is probably one of the most important resources for urbanizing your population in the entire game. So I'm going to go ahead and pick up stone cutting. Um, it's also really important for slingers because my slinger here actually uses stone as an upkeep resource. This game is merciless, definitely buying it now. I mean, I am playing on the maximum difficulty, so just keep that in mind. Unlocking slavery is important. Yeah, well, look, it's not, it's not like, it's ancient era slavery, right? It's where, it's basically serfdom. It's not the same, probably not, it's not like the, the slavery you have in mind, but it's, it's still awful. Don't get me wrong. Uh, so I think what we're going to do here is we're going to take this slinger and we're going to spend 100 of our military resource and we're going to add my leader, King Cyrus, to this unit. Now, King Cyrus will have a, mu a multitude of effects on this unit it'll give it plus one movement per order so you can see here uh, every unit can move a number of times per turn so you can see here this unit has three little action points which means it can move three times which means it can use three orders per turn and it can move pretty far per turn right like it can move pretty far if i put king cyrus in charge of this unit every it'll, it'll make this unit more efficient movement wise because instead of being able to move two tiles with one order, it'll be able to move three tiles. So I could move this entire distance only using two orders. Um, so that's important to be able to make your units more efficient. Um, it's expensive to do this, but it'll also make the unit stronger, which means I might be able to clear out some uh, neutral, like tribal encampments. I think they used to be called barbarians, but I think they're called tribes now. Um, but yeah, I'd be, able to, I'd be able to clear out some tribal encampments. And maybe claim myself some more cities. So I'm going to put King Cyrus in charge of this slinger. And now, whenever this slinger engages in combat, my leader will actually get experience and then he can level up. Yes, your people can level up. This game is super complicated. There's a lot happening. But here's the thing. 
once you kind of get a handle on all the little mechanics that are happening, the game actually becomes really simple. And it's like, okay, it's like, I need certain goals. I have to do this, but it's kind of simple in a very like nice flowy kind of way. And then as you get better at the game again, it becomes complicated again. It's a very interesting game flow. Now, I did settle the hunters here in this city, and it, there is an argument to be made for plus 4 growth and plus 10 food. However, there's also an argument to be made. Um, have I... Here, here's an important question. Have I unlocked, a pas unlocked pastures yet? So let me have a look. I do have pasture tech, so I can theoretically build pastures. Oh, by the way, there's also wonders in this game. Like a whole ton of wonders. Um, that do all sorts of various things. We're probably not going to be building a wonder this game. Uh, but you can build a hanging gardens that gives you 20% growth in every city. Four culture and two victory points. You get 50 victory points and you win. Bada bing bada boom. Who is Bardia and why is he a kid? Bardia is my son, I believe. Uh, I believe I can check my family tree here. Uh, I don't know who Bardia is, but here's me. I should probably get married and have an heir because I don't have an heir right now. Uh, usually you'll get an event to get married pretty early into the game. So actually Bardia is, um, you have Mandana and Sukra who are the hunter family. Their son is Bardia, I believe. Yeah, so that's their family tree. So when you settle a house, you also get a bunch of characters from that house. And so this is a, 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 like a political family in the game that I can do like political interactions with. Like I can influence her, I can spend money and orders to try and improve her opinion of me. If I improve her opinion of me, that will improve the opinion of the Mehranid family of me, which might get me some benefits. Like for example, um, if you look here, if I look into the city, there's a way to see the effects of the family is having from being happy with me. I forget, I have to check that. Anyway. If I make this family happy, they'll give me benefits. If I make them unhappy, their cities that they own will have penalties. So, really, super a lot going on in this game. But the great thing is, these are turn-based games. You can take your time. Uh, I think part of me is kind of interested in going for uh, pastures first, weirdly. Because they cost 20 wood each but they give me half an order two growth and five food whereas these don't give me the orders and i feel like those early orders could be super useful so i'm going to get to work on these pastures it's two growth although oh and here's the most important thing i just made a decision but there's an undo button you know what i'm gonna i'm just gonna make that builder go back to where they were super beautiful elegant part of the game the other argument is um these nets things are super efficient. Like, it's also 20 wood input, but you get out of it uh, twice as much growth and twice as much food. So, it's hard to choose. I would be a lot poorer in terms of orders early game if I go for these fishing boats, but I'll be a lot richer in terms of food and growth, which will mean I could build more workers. Is this one made by an old Civ dev? Yeah, there's definitely a couple of people who worked on Civ who, who helped make this game. I believe, actually, um, Christopher Tin is working on a soundtrack for the game. The game's not, like, fully complete yet. They're still, like, updating it and stuff. Oh, thank you, uh, Supernat. Uh, there's also these resources here. You see these shrubs? You can cut them. You can cut down trees with your workers. Normally it costs an order. However, cutting down small shrub like this, uh, it doesn't actually take an order. So the fact that my worker has started here, I just get 10 wood up here in my resource pile for free. So that's pretty useful. That's actually super useful. Thank you for that tip. Ah, Jesse Moran. Thank you so much for uh, Moran for becoming a member of the channel. I really appreciate you. How many hours have you put into the game? Probably like 100 to 120. Uh, but yeah, it's still turn one. I think... I reckon we go for the triple pasture opener. Horses, goat, goat, chop, chop, then the nets. Because orders are super powerful early game. Like the more of them you get, the more you can do. So I'm going to go onto the horses. 
I'm going to uh, start building a pasture. This pasture will give me plus one order per turn, which means I'll be able to move my scout around a lot faster. Uh, this will take three years to build. Thank you so much. This will take three turns to build. It'll cost me 20 wood. Boom, boom, boom. Or orders are super valuable. Um, there's a couple of ruins. There's some ruins here and there's some ruins here. These are uh, ancient ruins. Let's go ahead and grab them. We found some despoiled runes. Scavenging through the ruins, we find significant amounts of stone, iron, and wood. However, local raiders could reach the ruins by nightfall. We can't fight them off. We can carry some of the loot back home. Which of these three would you like to bring back? So we can bring back some stone to be able to build some uh, buildings. We can build back, uh, bring back iron in order to build military troops. Or we can bring back wood in order to build rural improvements like pastures and stuff like that. Now, this actually... Uh, is a pretty tough choice. I decided to go for stone cutting early, which I means I feel like I'm planning on using my orders to get um, to get to get stone. Whereas wood would allow me to build, not have to chop down these forests. Now, if I go ahead and show all improvements, uh, is there a way for me to? So quarries cost 20 iron each to build. Um, and I don't think I'm going to really have time to build mines before I want to get quarries up. So I, I'm thinking this decision here, if I get iron, it says iron for our troops, but I might get iron and use that to build quarries. <laughs> 120 hours and still turn one no 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 i've played this game for 120 hours and we probably played this game for like 50 oh my god i i forgot to start my recording software oh christ <sighs> that's gonna be painful Well, I guess this is a, uh, <laughs> a one and done kind of stream. This is so much good quality content. Rip. Want to start over? Nah, we'll just we'll just power through. Iron for our troops. Uh, yeah, I think I'm going to take iron for all the reasons above. Oh, that feels bad. I can't believe I forgot to start the recording. Hello? Yep. I feel dumb. Forgot to start the recording, so I'll probably have to pull video from the VOD later and send it to Morbus to turn this into a video. You know what? We'll do it live. So probably anything before this part of the video probably sounds awful. Um, rather than continue to explore with this unit, I would like to bring my slinger closer to this ancient ruin. However, this slinger has already moved this turn. So what I might do is move on to the... Um, what is this? This is salt. I might move on to the salt because I could harvest it next turn. And harvesting salt is worth 15 culture, which would be a significant culture boost to my capital. So we'll, uh, we'll pop there and next turn we'll harvest the salt for one order. And that's it. Those are all the actions we can do this turn. Let's end the turn. And someone was saying in your last live stream that this game was never coming to Steam. This is why you shouldn't listen to gamers. Of course the game is coming to Steam. It had like a timed exclusive with Epic Games. Like that's all it was. So you guys need to calm down. Um, so. We are now losing one order per turn from improvement construction. Because this worker is actually building an improvement over and over. Like he's, this, he's, he is doing this job which takes an order per turn. I'm going to spend one order on harvesting the salt because that's worth 15 culture, which boosted my culture along in here, which means we'll reach a higher level of culture slightly faster, which is useful because culture is kind of like local technology. Technology, like if you imagine 
this is like your global technology and then culture is like how advanced is the local city um might be a way to consider it so let's go use two orders to get to here and then we'll use the final order to hit this ancient ruin there's a giant statue these ruins are overshadowed by an enormous statue of a figure in a bold stance legs astride what remains of the city gates and fist raised towards the sky while it's still sturdy time is sturdy time has eroded the features beyond any recognition so i could guess uh, i have the statue repaired in my own image this is a good time now to talk about legitimacy i could spend 42 gold and get plus two legitimacy or i could grab 150 stone from this now legitimacy is pretty important because it's rare and difficult to get legitimacy is over here um you get legitimacy from doing ambitions and doing lots of really important and cool stuff you do lots of things you get more legitimacy um basically legitimacy is a measure of how prestigious your family is it makes people like you more it gives you more orders per turn so if you think of this here this legitimacy this is like 0 0.2 orders per turn for the rest of the games for for 42 uh gold here that's pretty valuable you might also consider it as a small uh opinion boost with every family in the game so for example if we go to mihrenid here um, plus 15 opinion from our legitimacy so this is also like plus two opinion with every character in our empire um, so that's something we should definitely consider how do i see his opinion of you she's upset because she's proud what a jerk um so for 42 gold this seems like a pretty big deal i'd have to sell a little bit of resources to get that so would you say that legitimacy is the most valuable resource in the game probably not i'd say it is a valuable resource to where getting 150 stone right now and plus two legitimacy for 42 gold is a le legitimate choice <laughs> um but i think i think the stone because we start with so few resources the extra stone might be the kickstart that we need to actually you know do something with our economy uh how do i show resources the way to show resources yeah here we go here's resources so we have did i not get ah so here's my freebie city this is my freebie second city uh, second city site because the game starts you off with a half belt settler you get to send a settler to your freebie city site um i'm thinking this harvest is also worth culture and getting er early culture can be quite valuable there are downsides to getting early culture but i think spending a little bit of time as persia harvesting in the early game seems like how they're supposed to play so that's what i'm going to do i'm going to focus on harvesting with um with this scout i really like the idea of having more basic resources for city management beside gold and food having get wooden stone adds a whole other layer of building yes yeah, there's, there's every single resource up here matters for cities every single one of these things matters so keep those in mind all right let's step onto the honey we'll harvest the honey and then I'm going to go ahead and jump onto this hill for a little bit of visibility. So we discovered, we were the first to discover horses and elephants. And that gave us a little bit of a boost to, um, to our gold. Um, I think I'm going to go step on and harvest these horses. Because harvest down here in the bottom right, they're worth 60 gold. If you're wondering where I'm looking to get that info. And it looks like there might be another city site over here. So I may want to bring my slinger across the map to do that. So it's harvest. Boosh. And then start bringing the slinger back over. Mm. Let's do a scout. No, it's just an isolated pocket of city. So maybe not an extra city over here. Could be, could be. But at least as far as I can tell, it doesn't look like it. But we got another harvest off. We stepped onto a hill. We revealed some map. So harvesting is very valuable. Something, something you should definitely consider doing as a player. Uh, our unit approach the greek border they're met by armed soldiers those men bring an address aggressive mes message all nations willing to treat greece must uh pay tribute so we can pay iron and tribute or we can refuse to pay tribute now this will give me experience but greece will hate me 
I'm not strong enough to fight off Greece right now. Uh, Greece has five cities and a massive military compared to me right now. My best bet to survive the early game may be just to try to appease Greece. Now, the other swish of that coin is maybe my best bet is to go to war with Greece early. Like, just start fighting and winning battles uh, and, and, and force them to waste time on production. However, I'm going to err on the side of caution and I'm going to offer them tribute and iron. To keep him happy now he doesn't like that we're close but i'm hoping that i might be able to build up a relationship with greece because if i can get an alliance with greece i can use that alliance to maybe attack a different player and grow my empire that way so we completed now the pasture here so we're getting plus one output from our horses here um which is fantastic plus one output on our horses uh in terms of pastures and not only that by completing this We've also opened up the option to turn this into a specialist. So I could spend, if you look down here in the bottom right, I can spend 20 food and use uh, 60 civics. My city produces eight per turn to uh, turn this into a rural specialist, a rancher who will get me an extra order per turn and plus one science. So this is this is how you get technology. You, you build an improvement and then you put a specialist on that improvement. So specialists are kind of like, uh, you know, scientists from Civ 5 or merchants and stuff like that except in this game there's a whole range of different kinds of specialists you got a referral link or creator code that i can type when i'm buying the game from epic games unfortunately not um i'm trying to get that resolved with epic i've tried a few different channels but they seem pretty stubborn maybe i might be able to get another creator code in the future they they did this thing where they like disabled all the old creator codes and I didn't realize they were doing that, so I, w I wasn't paying attention. Uh, for a few months, didn't know they were switching it. And like a month after they changed the system, they uh, disabled all the creator codes. It didn't get updated. And I sent them a few emails trying to get it fixed. And they just haven't. They just won't figure I just I, I don't understand the why. I'm in good standing. I made money on it. And I don't understand why they won't. They just won't update the creator code. It just doesn't make sense to me. But whatever. Uh, our hearts melt with gratitude. So this is the Iron Tribe. We have met the Danes. These are a neutral faction. Hey, Potato, which game do you like more? This one or Humankind? I, I like both for different reasons. They're two, two very different games. It's like asking me, do I like Battlefield or Call of Duty? I like both because I'm looking for a different thing when I'm playing both games. They're of a similar genre, but they, they, they give me a different feeling. Um... Okay, so a delegation from the Danes has arrived bearing an introductory gift of iron. The leader, leader of the delegation explains the Danes have long gathered and mined iron for trade with their neighbours. So I could pick up an extra 150 iron and maintain the truce with the Danes. Or I could gain plus 5 legitimacy and declare war on the Danes. Now war with the Danes is probably the most likely outcome in the long run as Persia. Um, but do I really want to be at war with the Danes right now? 5 legitimacy is huge and so is 150 iron. Now, if King, if King Cyrus was productive, a dealmaker, or prosperous, I could also uh, get 100 training. So, this is a tough choice. It's a tough one. Is there a grace period on city sites? You have 10 turns to claim your first unowned city site near your city before the AI will take it off you. That is confirmed by the developer's own words. Um, now, they're not... Here's the thing, though. This is the weakest they'll ever be. And it's the most likely avenue for expansion I'm going to get this game. However... War is expensive in orders. Very, very, very expensive. And I do not have the order economy to sustain a war for very long. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to... This is, this is also half an order per turn. That's something to consider. It's half an order for, per turn for the rest of the game. 
I think we declare the war, actually. It's like too valuable not to. Um, we will just, after getting the settler, we'll just, um, we'll produce thingies. So we're going to get ourselves another pasture. This will be another half an order. And then I'm going to start bringing my slinger down to fight with the, um, fight with the Danes. Now, my scout here is going to take a little bit of damage. It's unfortunate. But I'm pretty sure King Cyrus the Great should, in theory, be able to take this city site on his own before I get reinforcements to him. So I'll spend three orders here. Cross the river. Someone's been harvesting. Cross over here. Step onto the forest. Step onto the forest. So it looks like Greece is to my south as well. So yeah, I, I, I need to get this city site. I just need to take it. So this is going to be my priority early game is to take on this Danish city site. Any orders you don't spend at the end of the turn are turned into gold. So that's pretty valuable. So what wonders are still left? Pyramids? Won't be able to afford them. And turn. He came forward to shoot my guy. You can see here I do different amounts of damage depending on how close to this unit I am. Range of two. Let's step forward and sling him. Boom. That's 10 experience on Cyrus. Attack 10 times and he will level up. You get double experience for killing a unit. So this tells me this exploratory direction is maybe not so useful. I'll check out the desert just for the sake of potentially discovering things. Um, 10 food harvest. I think we head back and harvest the salt again. On our way back to the northeast, I think. I think we've discovered that Greece is to our west and to our south. Okay, and so maybe folks. other directions are more fruitful. What up, Tato? Hope you had a nice holiday. Welcome back. Hey, how's it going, Clark Charles? Thank you so much for your uh, donation, $5. I appreciate it, man. Uh, a marriage proposal from the Mihranid family uh, to, for you, King Cyrus, the founder. I also, I think some of the portraits in the game are based on some of the developers. So keep an eye out. You might recognize some of them. Um, we've got Oligarch Mandana the Younger. So this is part of their family. So I could actually get married to uh, the head of the Mihranid family, which would improve my opinion with the Mihranid and give me direct control over this character. So if I thought that she was valuable, like she has bad wisdom, she had good, good charisma, good courage, bad discipline. So as my consort, she'll cost me 12 gold per turn, but she'll net me a ton of uh, civics per turn. I think I would actually rather marry this younger lady um, for uh, her wisdom and charisma because she doesn't have any negative stats. She is romantic. She's also a scholar. Um, so she would actually help me with my technology here. Plus three tech is pretty valuable. Now, arguably, I, see, I, I don't really want to lose because like plus three tech right now is a 50% increase in my technology. It seems really hey, va uh, valuable. Thanks for the multi-game yesterday. It was pretty fun. Thank you so much, Jabasta. I appreciate you. I think I'm going to go ahead and take um, the Statira the Younger here for the extra three science per turn because that is just a huge, huge benefit. It's a 50% science increase right now. So now that's my wife. She's a 21-year-old uh, scholar who will... Uh, now also act as a character in my family and presumably in the near future we will have a baby does this game have hot seat multiplayer i actually don't know off the top of my head i i think so so let's go ahead and attack with the slinger again boosh we get 20 experience because we got a kill and we got 50 training because king cyrus the founder is a hero and he gets plus 50 training per military unit killed so we kill the danish unit 
Very good. We have our first settler. I'm going to send it over here to the city site. Unfortunately, I don't have a huge amount of information of this city site. Which is going to make it a little bit harder to make decisions. I'm going to harvest the salt again so we can boost the culture in my capital. Um, and then I'm going to start making my way to the northeast. Because there's some marble over here. Uh, as well as potentially more interesting lands that I could possibly settle. Uh, so my capital has finished the uh, the settler. And I think we're going to go for a sentinel now. We'll pick, or a slinger rather, with sentinel. Because slingers are cheaper for my civilization. And they're better for my civilization. And this is a ranged unit city. So I'll grab myself a slinger. I'm at war with the Danes. So an early military unit will perhaps help me secure some more city sites. My worker has completed another location. Unfortunately, I used up all my orders. Um, but I'll get to work on this next turn. Uh, the announcement at the heir's birth. Celebrations erupt in the capital of Parsa. So we've had a son. Prince Darius is our son. Uh, he is uh, just a baby. No stats. But I get 20 experience for having a child. Pretty valuable. I'm halfway to a level up. Let's come forward here. What the hills do again? They don't give you any bonuses. Let's step over here. We'll attack this guy. Slightly closer to a level up. Um, let's make sure we prioritize building our pastures. Oh, you know what's actually important? Is getting a city settled. But yeah, the vision range on units compared to scouts is very, very small. Step forward here. And now we need to pick which of these city tiles we're going to settle on. I like being coastal. Um, where is it? Is it N? Yeah, this shows my connectivity. So I can settle on pretty much any of these tiles and be connected to my capital. Um, settling here has advantages. It's a camp. Now, religion-wise, I don't know if a religion has been founded. Is there a way to tell? Anyway. Because my capital is coastal, I'm going to settle coastally here as well. There's the Black Sea discovered. That's another legitimacy. Exploring the map gives you legitimacy, so that's why another reason why scouts are valuable. Hills provide additional range of attacking a non-hill tile. Ooh, valuable. Uh, my units do more damage the closer they are to units, so I wanted to get up close and, imp imp and personal in his face. So, Cyrus the Founder. Our Cognomen has upgraded. Do we settle another Mithrinid family? Do we settle the Sassanids? Do we settle the Clerics? I don't think it makes sense to settle another um, Mihrinid founder. I don't see any fish in range of the city currently. Now, that might change when we actually settle the city. Um, I do feel like... Explore first and roll back. I mean, that seems kind of like gamey. You know what I mean? Like to do this and then to go back an action. Like, that seems kind of gamey. Um... I, I prefer to only really use the undo action if I made it like an, a genuine mistake, like a misclick, or like I forgot about something. Uh, the Arsacid Clerics. Now, if I want to go a religion direction, religion is really, really strong. I was showing I was showing people it was possible because maybe some people like it. I didn't actually gather any information though. Um, this is worth five legitimacy too to settle this. I kind of like the idea of maybe settling clerics here. Do 
The Akinamid seat here also gives me plus one order per turn. I'm in a war. It'll give me treasury one, which will help pay for the fact that I have negative money right now. Also gives me... Yeah, I feel like this is the meme here. I think we go for the statesman here. Now, here's the thing. If we don't settle clerics now, though, we'll probably never get a religion. Holy City being this close to 2AI, they're going to follow your religion? You know what? I actually like that idea. It's going to be the clerics. We're going to found a religion. So we just founded Zoroastrianism. And we're going to want to focus on spreading that. So religions give you culture in your city, so that's valuable in of itself. We're now known as the Settler because we founded two cities. Our cognomen is upgraded and we have a little bit more legitimacy. Uh, we got an event from Egypt. Two overturned wagons are discovered and are clearing their goods are scattered across the grass. An Egyptian woman and her children weep over a dead body. The survivors claim that a bear attacked them without warning. Uh, so we've contacted Egypt. Now we could choose to escort the survivors to the nearest settlement. This could have improved our relationship with uh, Egypt. So we could provide them with a guide. I think we provide them with a gu guide. We don't have the orders to escort. So I'm going to give them a guide, which hopefully will give us a positive relationship with Egypt. I just, I can't spare the orders. I don't have them. Now, I'm going to do something that is maybe ill-advised, but I'm going to go ahead and buy an order. I'm going to use my red resource training to buy an order so that I can get started with this builder on a pasture, which will give me half an order per turn and some growth and some food. I feel like long term, this is a reasonable play. I don't have a huge amount of uses for my orders at the moment. Has this guy acted? Yeah, he's already attacked this turn. I don't know if I want to buy another order. Artakawana is going. Does this city not have a treasury? Oh, no, this is the thingy. I think it might be a meme to focus heavily on spreading my religion here using this city. Uh, I could spread my religion to my capital. I could spread my religion to Greece. I could spread my religion to Egypt. So I think that's what I'm going to focus on here is just going heavily into spreading my religion for cultural reasons and for, um, you know, all the benefits that that brings to my civilization. So we founded Zoroastrianism. Born in the ancient fire cults, Zoroastrianism has taken hold in Artaquana. Uh, the teachings of the prophet Zoroaster have been passed down from generation to generation and are now becoming a regular part of life in the city. They describe a cosmic struggle, the divine Ahura Mazda fighting against the chaotic Angira Menu. Those who live with the ideal of truth, justice, and humility give aid to Ahura Mazda in this fight. Will you support this new religion? So we can donate stone to the religion and get an opinion boost with them for 40 years it's quite valuable uh we can ask them just like hey tell me about your ways and i'll get a small benefit or i can refuse to support them and gain legitimacy since this is my religion refusing to support them seems a bit dumb i don't know if i want to spend 60 stone for opinion boosts i mean this is a really strong opinion boost like really strong um and it's important to note that an opinion boost with a, with a religion gives you an opinion boost with every character that follows that religion. So if I have a really good opinion with Zoroastrianism and I convert a bunch of cities and a bunch of people to Zoroastrianism, all those people will like me more. So for those reasons, I think I will actually spend this stone. It's a temporary boost, but it's a strong temporary boost. Uh, and that's that turn. We're up to nearly 10 orders per turn. So I'm feeling like Persia has a very, very strong warlike start into the game. Now, my one worry is that maybe a extra Dane unit will come out of the fog of war. However, I think I have time. Uh, someone became... Sorry, what was that? Someone became the leader of Zoroastrianism. Where was it? Uh, my grandfather converted to Zoroastrianism. Cool. Uh, attacked by a bear. So she is happy with me because I aided her citizens, which is going to improve any diplomatic 
things that I need to do with Egypt, which is good for me because right now uh, we have very, very negative opinion. She doesn't like that we're close. She doesn't like that we're a different class. Um, maybe appealing to King Philip might be my best bet because he also hates Egypt. So I think I think I think think I can already see the political landscape starting to take shape, and it's going to be me and King Philip against Egypt. I think that's how the game is going to play out. So the victims of the bear attackers delivered safely to the settlement of the nation. Uh, uh, the, the village leader thanks our people for the kindness. So we can express a desire for cooperation in the future. I will become affable, gain experience, which will level me up this turn. Uh, and I'll also gain the affable trait, which gives me plus one growth per year per culture level in all my cities. That's pretty good for a leader. Or I can start a trade deal with Egypt where I get 17 gold in exchange for 1.5 food. That's actually a pretty solid trade deal. And I am low on gold right now. So both of these things will significantly help me. This one will help me less, but for a longer period of time. And this will help me more, but for a shorter period of time. I think I'm going to go ahead and take the trade deal because it's a very small amount of food to get my economy to be balanced again. Uh, hostile neighbors. A Greek military officer and his squad of soldiers march into court, causing great alarm. He reads from a crisp, sealed scroll, your next tribute payment is due. We will make ourselves comfortable until the matter is settled. So I could pay a tribute in gold, or I could pay a tribute in iron, or I could refuse to pay any tribute. Now, this will upset Greece. Um, I think I will pay the tribute in gold. I want, to keep my, I want to keep Greece happy, and I'm okay with playing second fiddle to Greece if it means that he will be my ally and we can attack Egypt together. I don't mind being a tributary to Greece because it, it may give me the opportunity to take someone else over in the future. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to harvest the goat. That's 15 food. Step onto the hill. What's this here? This is honey. I'm going to harvest the honey as well. There's some barbarians to the east. That's useful to know. This is where I'm definitely going to be redirecting my army over here to fight these guys. Harvest on the honey. Now, one of the cool special abilities of scouts here is they have stealth. So if you're worried about them being attacked, just put them on a forest that's not owned by anybody and they become invisible. And so that scout is basically um, can't be attacked by these barbarians. I'm very happy with this, though. I managed to pick up a good bit of resources from that scout. Ah, it's time to pick an ambition. Lovely. <clears throat> so we have the uh, ambitions are one of the victory conditions in the game. Uh, there's little emoticons on the bottom left of leaders, leaders' avatars. What are those for? I don't see what um, what you're talking about. Emoticon? You have to... You mean these little symbols here? Like courage, charisma, wisdom, and discipline? Those are like their stats. Uh, okay, so we can either choose to promote five units, which will be expensive in terms of training. However, that is our best bet likely to do this thing. Or we can complete six festivals. Festivals are things that get you culture. Both of these are okay. I think I would more likely go for the five unit promotions. I've already gone for a more militaristic opener. So I feel like five unit promotions is the right things. Oh, you mean these things like the ant? Yeah, e each of these is um, the archetype. So you can see here, uh, King Philip is a commander. That's his archetype, and that's the eagle head. I am a hero, and that's the lion head. And then Queen Hat Pushit is a builder, which is the uh, ant. So each of those has their own stats and stuff like that. So yeah, militaristic direction. I think we pick up five unit promotions here. Um, yes. We do plan on promoting our units. I've got two orders in the bank, which means I'll gain a little bit of extra gold at the end of this round. Uh, my grandfather is now the leader of Zoroastrianism, which means that the religion is now upset with me. Because my father doesn't like me. My grandfather doesn't like me because I stole Persia, the kingdom of Persia from him. Um, so that has reduced the opinion of Zoroastrianism, which is good because I gave them support. So that means they're not quite as upset as they should be. 
they're just like a little bit upset with me which is making my cities a little bit unhappy uh my wife cannot let go of grievances and is often angry she became bitter so my wife is a bitter woman now lovely i've married a bitter scholar i mean as name name a more iconic duo bitterness and being a scholar <laughs> uh, Place, palace servants often find uh, Queen Consort Statira walking among the gardens, openly pondering the questions of life, mortality, and desire. One day, uh, she asks if she may take lessons with one of the court's philosophers. How shall we proceed? Now, I don't have the money for this, but I would really like that plus five science. That's really valuable. Um, it is very expensive, and I don't want to upset my wife. I want to pay for this. However... <sighs> It's got to be hard. It's got to be hard. I have, I'd have to give up some of my hard-won resources here to make this happen. Plus two wisdom on my wife, who is quite young and will be around for a long time. That's plus five science. That's another 50% increase in my science per turn. Um, I don't want to sell off my food because food is how you pay for settlers. I can't sell off my food. I can't sell off my stone. So I think I, think I actually just have to sell off my iron here i'm gonna sell off 100 iron so i can pay for this boom get an extra five science per turn which will mean that five science per turn is a really big deal are you playing on higher ai advantage or development i just i have i, ju I just put in like the default maximum difficulty so all of the ai cities start with five or all of the ai start with five cities and i start with one and i also start off with zero resources which makes the game very hard um how much are settlers actually it's a good question settlers are 100 gold each so i think harvesting with my slinger here makes sense harvest the game it's 15 food i'm gonna harvest the marble too have a little scout okay i don't think there's much more information i'm going to find this way until i attack this barb camp so i'm going to send my scout to the west slinger get the kill take over the camp uh, weapons of war. Our forces arrived at the Danish stronghold just in time. S signs suggest that the Danes were preparing a massive, sustained invasion of our lands. Luckily, most of their weapons remained in an unused stockpile. What should we do with this discovery? So we could get a free warrior, which is useful. Or we could gain 150 iron and, a, and 150 wood. Uh... 150 iron and 150 wood is actually a lot harder for me to get right now than a warrior. Like, I can get a warrior pretty quick. Um, with a little bit of iron. And getting the 150 wood means I don't have to stand around chopping forests. I can just immediately run over here and start, um... And start doing these fishing boat tiles. So, I think, considering that's going to be happening next turn... I will go ahead and take the 150 iron and 150 wood because that opens up opportunities for me to start to develop my cities a little bit more. Uh, and we'll go to the next turn. Can you sell off your wife? No, but you can um, You can interact with your wife. You can convert her to your religion. You can influence her. Uh, and I think also, depending on what her thingy is, if she's a scholar... I don't know why my tooltips are being like this. Hang on. There's something not right something has gone wrong ah I think I will disable the tutorial on um Something has gone wrong with the, the tooltip mode. Like sometimes I hover over things. It used to not work like this. I can't hover over things in the sub tooltip anymore. Oh no. It's hard to describe. It's like it's not working exactly as it as it's meant to. Why is it called Steam Launch? Steam tells me it'll be released. Oh, that's right. My bad. 
Ups. Yeah, whoops. I meant to say Steam announcement. Thank you for that correction. I really, really appreciate you. I misspoke. Apologies there. Should should have said Steam announcement. Um, yeah, my bad. All right, let's end year. Perfect. Your wife has given birth to a daughter, a Pama. We could take the time and build a couple of mines, or I think I'm going to go step here. Harvest the scrub for no orders and then jump on and start getting these nets online. Um, these will be worth four growth and ten food each, which is a huge boost to our economy. We've got a ton of orders, which is quite rare usually. Um, let's spend a little bit of time promoting our unit here. I am going to take Eagle Eye is quite good. Shield bearer is good. I feel like focus is kind of sick. Um, it's a 10% chance to crit. But I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'll spend a little bit of time healing first. And I need to get a settler now. ASAP. Hopefully the extra growth here will mean I get that settler pretty quick. My scout has a lot of moves. Didn't discover many resources, but we do have an option to get extra silver here. I don't think I can speed anything along, can I? No, requires developing culture. I might get developing culture if I were to go... Hmm. If I were to get developing culture, I could use my civics to finish the settler faster, which would free up this slinger and my general to go fight these barbarians here before they get much stronger. So I think that is part of my plan now, is to come over here and harvest this um, honey. All right, so we just finished stone cutting. Now, finishing stone cutting has shuffled some new cards into our deck. Uh, basically, when you unlock stone cutting, it leads to Stone Boost, Drama, and Polis. So all three of these things were shuffled into our, our deck. The deck is shuffled, and then new cards are drawn. Uh, bonus cards are technologies that you can research only once, and they give you a small, short-term benefit. Um, and if you skip them, they never come back. So I could pick up this Stone Boost and get... Uh, 200 stone two years from now, which seems pretty valuable. Um, but you do have to keep in mind, all of these other choices will be shuffled back into the deck and it might be multiple tech cycles before I see them again. So maybe, in fact, chariots are actually like super based here, which they kind of are because I'm playing Persia, right? I want to maybe settle my next city as the champions and build chariots. Um, it might be that actually getting chariots here is so important for me as Persia that I'll just skip the stone boost. And I think I am going to be going for a fairly militaristic game here. So getting chariots seems like the right move because they cost food and wood, but they only take upkeep of food and they're relatively strong. They got five combat strength. I feel like archers and horsemen are like the Persian thing. Um, this will also open up a government slot, the Chancellor, who is like a political position in my empire, who will give me empire-wide benefits. Quite good. Uh, drama uh, actually starts the music in the game. That's right, the music in the game does not play until you've researched drama. Um, you also get access to the Odeon, which is a culture building. can be upgraded a couple of times to be the theatre and the amphitheatre, which both cost more stone but give you more culture. Very good. Culture is one of the ways you can win the game. Uh, the more culture a city has, the more victory points it's worth. So culture is actually a pretty important mechanic for game winning. It starts off pretty early. Getting your Odeons early can actually snowball you in terms of culture to where each of your cities is worth four victory points each. It's pretty valuable when you only need 50. So if you have five cities, that's almost half the points. Boom, boom, boom. Build a couple of wonders and you're, you're off to the races. Do a few ambitions. 
etc. Um, I could pick up administration here. This would give me access to the treasury, which would be a way to convert my stone into gold over time. Treasuries are quite useful. It, man, it's hard because each of these things is pretty valid right now in this game. Like picking up an extra 200 stone would allow me to build more slingers and go to war easier. Um, I do feel like of my choices, I feel like Drama is the weakest because I have no stone income, so building Odeons will be quite difficult with my workers when I haven't even improved my basic resources. Um, administration is quite good, but I don't have any farming resources, so even building granaries isn't great, so I'd really only be picking it up for treasuries in the meantime. Stone boost is incredible. 200 stone for two turns of tech and basically get a shuffle on my technology deck to pull something out else that I might want is quite good. Um quite valuable i do think though if i was to pick something that like fits thematically with the game that i'm playing and would give me the strongest amount of benefits i do think it's spoked wheel because it'll open up the chancellor slot and i think i could make um i could make someone in my empire into a chancellor get some benefits from that and then also having access to the chariot is really really powerful so i think i think for all those reasons we're gonna go for spoked wheel we are playing persia remember um so mounted units are kind of one of our specialties uh, because we have the Palton Cavalry and the Cataphract and more importantly we have access to the Sassanid family which gives our mounted unit Saddleborn which makes them very very tough against melee units so just something to consider. We have our very first um, Zoroastrian in Disciple. I don't know if I can actually go into Gre Greece's territory but I'm definitely going to send this guy to my capital. don't know if he can make it this turn um, but I'm going to send this guy to my capital so that we can convert my capital to my religion. Now this guy can also build some other things. Like the Abder, Burz and Mir. This also gives you victory points. It gives you a, a culture boost. And some Zoroastrian in opinion. Um, it's basically like the this religion's wonder. Very, very valuable. Every 20 years you get a free disciple. So it's, it has a very, very small production boost associated with it. Could be quite good. Um, I think I'd like to... I don't know... Open borders. Can you... Does anyone know if you can send... Says you can spread already. Spread it to Parsa. Yeah, hang on. How close do I have to be? Yeah, I'll, yeah, we're going to spread the Parsa. Hell yeah. Boom. Parsa. Now following Zoroastrianism. The, the, the religion is a little bit up, upset, which is not good. But it does mean the city is now pulling in extra two culture per turn. Quite valuable. Um, that did use the Disciple. Does anybody know if you can, if you can enter into other people's borders? Oh, I guess I just have to get to the edge of his city, right? So yeah, I think I might go for... I think I might try to spread my religion more. Because having a really well-spread religion seems like it would be super valuable. It does essentially mean that this city is like net negative because it's eating food and eating gold by taking maintenance. But my hope is that by going for a religion-based play, it'll give me diplomatic benefits. That will mean that, yes, this city made a sacrifice, but in the long term, it put me in a better political position. I don't know if that's a good choice. It's the kind of interesting thing about this game, though. You don't always know what the best choices are. Um, I definitely want to pick up the gold. It's the Jack Sartes River. There's the Gauls up here to the north. I'm going to name this after chat, okay? The first member's name that I see in my YouTube chat, they're going to get the city named after them, all right? Please don't have a dumb name. Next, next member in my chat to type on, on YouTube chat, unfortunately. Yeah, I know. All right, Popple Up. This will be the... Popple Op River. Congratulations. We just renamed the river for you. Uh, delighted Envoy. A Gallic leader arrives in court. Delighted that we're already at war with her people's ancestral enemies, the Danes. So this is good. By declaring war on the Danes, it actually gave us a relationship boost with the Gauls. Uh, she wants us to pr establish a diplomatic friendship. Uh, so we can get peace with the Gauls. Peace with the Gauls is interesting. Now, it will cost us legitimacy because you're making peace with a tribe. These are kind of like uncivilized people who, you know, people don't respect them. They don't, they're not considered worthy, right? 
But if we can get all the way up to an alliance with the Gauls, we can actually settle on their tiles and hire their units as mercenaries, which is super powerful. So, getting peace with them is powerful. My leader would become a diplomat, which would mean he's no longer a hero. Um, this would allow him to get a national alliance or a tribal alliance. Tribal alliance. Oh, man. Tribal alliance as an option is crazy. So, this, this is a real fork in the road moment um, of how we're going to approach this game. We can make truce with the Danes and declare war on the Gauls instead. I'm kind of interested in switching because getting peace with the Gauls skips us up one of the diplomatic steps. And then if I get alliance with them, and not only do I get their vision, I can hire their units, but I can settle on their cities for like at no cost. I just have to get a settler over there. So this potentially opens up a huge amount of expansion opportunity for me. If I go with the Gauls, I could even marry a Gallic like princess. I could, you know, I could marry my daughter or my son off to a Gallic person. This, this opens up a lot of political opportunities for me. Now, it does mean my guy's not a hero anymore, but I'm kind of okay with him not being a hero anymore. Um, he did his job, right? He, he conquered a city-state. He opened up a city site for us. It would be kind of cool to have him still be a hero. Um... I will lose a lot of training per turn, but I'll gain a lot of civics rate. And the extra civics might be super useful for actually rushing things out in my capital city. Ooh, man. I feel like, yep, yeah, you know what? King Cyrus, age 37, he has realized that war is no longer the way. Diplomacy is the right move here. So I'm going to go for diplomacy. My leader is now a diplomat, so he has charisma instead. We're at peace with the Gauls. Um, we have to get a little bit more training in order to get uh, an alliance with them. But that shouldn't be a problem. We'll stop training a military unit in a second and we'll start getting some more. I can also influence her for gold. Let's have a look. Influence. It's worth experience. Um, but yeah, that opens up a lot of opportunities. I'm going to harvest the silver for a little bit of gold. I will harvest the marble. We'll step this way. The next turn, we'll do the honey. And that should uh, finish this city's uh, cultural advancement. And then we can maybe, maybe buy a settler in here. Uh, it's the spring equinox. It is spring and the tender flowers are in bloom, planting land and vivid pastels. Your family and the members of the court have gathered to celebrate the spring equinox at a time when light and darkness are in balance and hope permeates the air. Those gathered eagerly uh, look to you, uh, those gathered eagerly look to you as you prepare to speak. How shall we remember this wonderful day and ensure that future generations may enjoy the same? Ah, okay, so this is where we can start some ambitions. We can start an ambition to enact slavery. Uh, this is, I'm just going to sound like an, oh, like, listen, this is only true in the context of the game, okay? The ambition to enact slavery is really good because it's a really easy ambition to complete and ambitions are a victory condition, okay? I'm not saying slavery is good, okay? Uh, we could also do the same thing for freedom. Freedom is just worse, in my opinion. Uh, tyranny is also worse. Or I could just take 60 experience. 60 experience here is a potential option. 60 XP will level up my guy. He only needs 10 experience to level up, so maybe 60 is overkill. And then after he levels up, he'll need another 200 experience. Not sure I'd want to be known as the Settler. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Considering Settler is the lowest difficulty level in um in, in Civ. Uh... I feel like of all of these, the ambition to enact slavery kind of lines up with my goals. Because right now I want to get labor force so that I can actually unlock slavery and freedom. 
um, in particular because I'd like to enact slavery. This would, yeah, makes all my cities slightly less happy, but it gives me five orders per year. And considering going in a kind of a militaristic diplomatic direction early game, that feels like the right move. So I'm going to say the strong rule over the weak. So now we have another ambition to enact slavery. And if we finish this ambition, we get 10 legitimacy, which is plus 10 opinion, but everybody plus 10, um, plus one order per turn. Very, very valuable to do this. As much as I want to promote these units, I need to save my training now for uh, diplomacy with the Gauls, which doesn't feel great. Let's harvest this honey. Boom. The city now just became uh, a developing culture. Developing cultures. There are some downsides, right? Developing cultures, they mean your population eats more food and uses up iron as well. Whereas um, weak cultures, they only eat food. So something to consider. Culture also increases the upkeep of your cities. But here's the slinger. Um, we can't really do anything with these slingers until we get our... Um, Until we get our settler in play. Egypt is over here to the north. Spooky. Maybe an alliance with the Gauls might not be as fruitful as I'd hoped. Hopefully though, if I can get an alliance with them, it would open up a lot of political options. Um, God, it's too expensive to add a general. I like how this guy's still... Somehow, a general of this unit. Even though he shouldn't really be. Uh, a ribald letter. You received a letter from Ifra, who is the head of the Arsakid family. It reveals that she's in love with you. And she asks if you feel the same way. So this is another character in my empire. Uh, oligarch Ifra the Educated. She's a builder. She's in love with me. So I can take her as my lover and maybe have an illegitimate son. Or I can politely decline, which will increase my discipline. Give me 16 gold per year. <clears throat> I mean, stats are powerful. 16 gold per year is valuable right now. Whereas having a lover, sure enough. I think if it was later into the game. If it was later into the game and these guys had more cities, I would maybe consider like accepting her love because she's the head of the family. But I'm going to politely decline so that I get the discipline because 16 gold per turn is like a huge boost right now at this stage of the game. Uh, sporting chances. Increasing recognition of the city of Parsa as the center of culture. There's been that movement from the eldest to host the festival of archery. A decree was swiftly issued stating that in Parsa no other sports shall be practiced. Uh, rival factions have risen up arguing that wrestling or horse riding provide the better sport. The beleaguered city looks to you. Which shall you choose? So this is a culture event. Typically these are good they'll usually come with, a, with an upside. Um, very rarely will you get a negative from a culture event because it's like an achievement, right? So because our city has achieved a cultural level, we've gotten some sort of an event that'll allow us to give a benefit to the, to the city. Ah, so we can say, let the elders have their archery. This will give us a tradition of archery in the city. New ranged units will start with plus 50 experience. Not bad, considering this is already a hunter city. And hunter cities are usually good at building ranged units anyway, because they tend to be better. We can go for uh, athletic tradition. Wrestling, which means all infantry units, that includes melee and ranged units, will have plus 25 XP. I don't know why. Um... Come on, let me ho why won't it let me hover over this? Yeah, infantry units are basically anyone who's not on a horse, right? So, specific for archers, more general ground troops, or equestrian. And now you have to remember, experience is what you use in lieu of training in order to level up a unit. So this is theoretically, in the long run, a very large saving of training. I think if this was a champion city, I would take Equestrian for horse units leveled up. But I think because this is my capital, and because it's a hunter city, I'm going to take the, uh, the archery tradition. Because I plan to try to build mostly archers out of this city. 
Now, because the city is now a developing culture, I have the option to hurry production. However, there are five resources that you can use to hurry a city, um, but I only have the availability to use this one, the civics resource, because it is the default one. Now, hurrying production makes your city more unhappy. The more unhappy your city is, the worse penalties it gets. It upsets the family that owns the city. It lowers the growth rate. It lowers the science rate. It lowers, it increases the maintenance of the city. So unhappiness is something you need to be careful about. It's going to get very, very bad in the mid game. And then hopefully we can maybe deal with it in the late game. But it's going to get really, really bad. Um, it's, it's, it's just going to get bad. I'm saving up to hurry, but thankfully we are developing culture, so I will be able to hurry. I'll be able to spend my civics to hurry out this settler a few turns sooner than I would otherwise be able to get it, which means I'll be able to free up this slinger to move in and take out these barbarians a few turns sooner. Um, it's all coming together in a way that I like. We'll just end the turn, take those five orders, turn them into gold. Egypt has converted to my religion. That's perfect, by the way. Uh, the Danes have approached us looking for a truce. I think I'm going to refuse the truce in favor of picking up the experience because that experience will level up my leader. Uh, a Greek diplomat requests an audience saying that he speaks for Philip, our mighty ruler, appreciates your cooperation and paying tribute. Now that a relationship is established, he desires to sample your goods. Will you agree to trade with us? So they want a trade deal. Uh, I'll sell them three food for 8.5 gold. I'll become timid. Oof. This would give me a huge opinion boost with Greece. Mm. But it would also... So this is actually net neutral in, a, in opinion. This is net neutral in opinion. Um, and we already have a positive opinion from, from Greece. So I think I'm going to politely decline and take that extra little chunk of experience. Uh, let's see worker good job worker i now have a really really good food surplus we're going to go ahead and pick up another fishing net this one will take a uh, another three turns huge 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 so now these fisher um these fisher specialists are, are worth double again so they're basically double the value of the tile that you're getting it's pretty powerful um but that's not what we're here for How much for this? 440, so we'll get it pretty quick. In fact, I don't think I'm going to rush out the settler because I get so much food production in here anyway. That's you're not going to do anything this turn. At most, you're going to move this way slightly, but I don't think that's worth an order. Maybe one order worth. Hmm. Let me move my scout first. Oh, he attacked me. Uh, so more people are converting to Zoroastrianism. That's perfect. I am the general of the slinger. I've leveled up. I can become more swift, which gives me plus one fatigue limit on my units, which means they can use more orders per turn. I can become engineer or I can just get courage. Um, I feel like this courage here is super valuable to get my training rate up. So I'm going to take that, especially because my ambition here relies on my training rate. Um, let's also talk to the Gauls. Tribal Alliance, maybe. Oops, hang on. I want to talk about this decision. So we can get a tribal alliance with th these guys. Um, that opens up a lot of options. Um, the tribal alliance, if I can show you here, it will upgrade our relationship. Is there a way to show this? Uh, it, it, it'll upgrade our relationship with the Gauls to an alliance where I'll be able to see all their units and who they're fighting. 
and I'll also be able to command some of them, I believe. Um, I don't remember, though. Right, we found some camels. I'm going to grab... How many moves? You have two moves. So I'm going to grab the camels. I'll harvest the camels for gold. I'll move here. All right, next, next member in my YouTube chat. Go ahead, talk. I can't use my prime here. No, you can't use primes in my channel, unfortunately. Um, I don't, I don't have a uh, affiliate. Man, I'm missing out on so much money. I'm gonna email Twitch. I'm hoping, I'm hoping they'll answer me back. Uh, so this will be the Jacob Blue, the Jacob Blue um, Mountains. There you go. Cyrus isn't converted to my religion. Hmm, it's expensive to do that. I think it is what we're going to do here in the near future. But I think my resources are just too important to be spent on that right now. Oh, it's Buiz. Oh, God, hang on. I misread your name. Jacob Bui Mountains. Go. The undo button. Saving my ass again. All right, let's grab this. I'm now known as the Explorer. So my title is upgraded. And I'm getting 30 legitimacy from it. Uh, I've contacted two tribes. I have contacted two nations. I found three landmarks. I named two landmarks. I discovered some ruins. I've revealed a lot of tiles. So exploring seems like a pretty appropriate name for me here uh ooh, free technology here for 250 food it's a lot of food it's a lot of i don't think i can afford that i, just, I think i just have to take the discipline here which gives me money oh, that sucks i mean money is great don't get me wrong but i kind of would have liked this free tech four and one epics exploration that's a whole law there uh we can't afford we cannot afford to waste food on strangers this will give me plus one discipline which in of itself is not the worst thing in the world. Because it gives me a nice boost to my gold income. Ah, uh, the Explorer. The Scouts of Persia are fearless exploring ever further under your expert direction. Um, so my Cognomen upgraded so that I get an event. With the latest reports of far-off lands, you've had many discoveries compiled into a map of the known world. News of this spreads and you're soon known as the Explorer. Pouring over the map. Ah, uh, this should be P-O-U-R, over in the map. And imagine, imagining the place is still undiscovered, you wonder how you will stand apart from the other nations of the world. Is it time to pursue a new, amb new ambition to secure the name of Persia? So I can start a new ambition, control five developing cities, reveal 40% of the map. Um, I've already revealed 22% of the map, so this might not be a bad one. Or... I can say I'm not feeling ambitious right now. I feel like revealing... Revealing the map seems like a pretty mild ambition. It's the kind of ambition I could achieve, I feel. I could get like another scout. It would cost me a lot of orders. Um, but I'm also just working on revealing the map. Considering I've revealed 20% of the map in this many turns, I feel like revealing the map is a pretty good ambition here for me, especially because it's worth 10 legitimacy. It's going to be something I focus on pretty heavily with this scout, which makes that scout's priority list on my uh, like orders expenditure pretty high. Uh Let's make sure. I wish I had put a general in charge of this unit, but I needed my orders. So I'm going to be getting experience on him, but no experience on a character. Character experience is super valuable. Is there a limit to current ambitions? I have absolutely no idea. I've never, I've never seen a limit, nor have I hit a limit. Uh, acquired taste. Our citizens have acquired a taste for your foods, declares a visiting emissary. Would you consider making peace with Egypt that we might strengthen our bonds of trade? Ha. Huh. Ooh. Okay. So the political situation may have actually shifted here. While I initially thought that Greece was going to be my main enemy here, um, it seems that that like Greece might actually be, uh, or when I thought Egypt was going to be my, my main enemy, it might be that I make an alliance with Egypt and go after Greece. Because getting peace with Egypt is good. Um, it'll improve our relationship with them significantly and open up options for trading. I really wish I could pick up this gracious. God, having surplus food in the early game is super powerful thing for things like this. If I had 120 food, I could get a huge opinion boost with Greece or with them and become gracious. 
I could politely decline for experience, which seems like a terrible move. Oh, man. Plus two heart is so valuable to where I'm actually considering buying the food. I need 120. Because that's 20 civics per turn. You can do a lot with 20 civics per turn. Boom. I'm up to 50 civics per turn. That's so valuable. Considering, remember, that's the resource you use to rush things out of your cities. 300-ish gold for 60 food. Yeah. Damn, I'm late. How's it going, Mad Laugh? You can always rewind the stream. It's always an option. Uh, we'll attack there. 10 XP. And potentially kill a unit that's in our way. Settler in three turns. Uh, it's time for the scout to act. Let's double check we're not leaving anything behind here. Oh, the Everose River. Time to rename another thing. Uh, who's next? Pouring is correct. I don't know if pouring is correct. I've never seen it written P-O-R. Oh. Oh, apparently pour is correct. Never mind, I'm dumb. Yeah. Good call, guys. I guess I'm dumb. This will be the Daniel Hen... Riquez River. There you go, Daniel. You got a river named after you. Congrats. Probably the greatest achievement of your life. Ah, uh, we found the Danes. Who we're at war with. This is not what I wanted. I think we end our turn here. I'm going to be super mad if the Gauls only have a single city. Man, they want gold. Damn. This is so useful. I've already invested so many resources and like time into making this relationship happen that I kind of have to go for it now. So let me sell off a little bit of my resources here. Tribal Alliance. I'm now known as the Peacemaker because I made peace with two different civs. Very valuable. Now in a Tribal Alliance with the Gauls. Oh, are you fucking kidding me? They only have a single city. That's devastating, dude. At least I can use them to kill the Danes. Devastating. Pella already has Zoroastrianism. Okay. Well, I should have... Ch well, I, I didn't know that. I, there was no way I could know that. So that's, that's a rip. I just wasted a bunch of orders there. Worker. That's really unfortunate. Now, at the very least, I can actually use their military units as if they were mine. And I should be able to come over here and settle. And um, so I should be able to like immediately just get myself a second settler and grab myself another city, clear out these two barb camps, get another two cities. I've got good relationships with my AI neighbors. So like I'm, I'm kind of kind of feeling OK about this game right now. Um, maybe another Zoroastrian and disciple is not correct. And instead, I will go for a worker. It's time to start like improving my city in here. Probably the second Zoroastrian worker was a mistake. I think I might go scout after the settler. So I could do a bit more harvesting. 
haven't been doing a whole lot of harvesting. This guy is stealth, so he won't be attacked again. He shouldn't be attacked again. Kill there, and then I'll bring you back to heal. Worker, slinger. Uh, I've got some work on my worker. I think I harvest. I think I harvest and then step to build the quarry next turn. There's a golf city west and north. Ah, oh, there is. Prince Darius is now old enough to be tutored by courtiers. This is a pretty valuable thing you can do. Uh, you can basically upgrade the stats of your heir. Um, by like getting people to train them. Oracle is quite expensive. Uh, I think getting the quarry now is the right move. I spend 20 iron. Four orders. And... Um, a little bit of time to get nine nine uh, stone per year 40 percent from the adjacent mountains boost i think that's that's the right move here pick up a little bit of that disciple less important scout is pretty important there's nowhere really to explore i think we just sent him harvesting let's make sure we're prioritizing this though okay Let's just send him on a harvesting journey. I think by being at peace with Egypt, I can explore their lands, which might be what I do. I think the move is to head this way. Let's see if I can't find another Greek city to convert. Maybe even just convert one of my own cities. You come back and heal. So good job. You killed you killed one of these barb units. It's a good thing to have done. You know you can set on your ally city site. Yes. Oh, the Romans are over here. They are at war with the Gauls. Spend a couple orders hurting the Roman units. Probably not worth it, to be honest, actually. Probably the best thing for me to do is to explore with these barbarian units. Alright, Settler down here. Now, the nice thing in this game is Settlers aren't completely vulnerable to being murdered instantaneously. Slinger, slinger, plus, plus. Political prisoner. Our scouts encounter a party of Roman soldiers whipping a man bound by his wrists and ankles. The warriors accuse the man of inciting rebellion, stalking members of the royal family and attempting to infiltrate the treasury. However, the victim insists that he is innocent of the crimes. What's the win condition? Either get 50 victory points or complete 10 ambitions. So we can follow their advice and move along. I will become cruel, which will hurt the growth in all my cities. Uh, I can fight them for possession of the prisoner, which will upset Rome, which I don't care about because Rome is really far away from me. And I'll gain a court minister who is quite valuable. Court ministers are useful and valuable. Um, and I could use this court minister to tutor one of my heirs. That seems pretty very valuable to be able to tutor Prince Darius. I could just yoink this prisoner. <sighs> I'm yoinking the prisoner. Uh, so we have stolen Darband the minister. He's a diplomat. Uh, with eight charisma. So he's giving me even more civics. This was like a brilliant decision on my part. Oh, thank you, Darbant. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. He, I could use him to tutor my prince. However, I don't have the 200 gold required. That would give me a 75% um, chance to improve one of my, one of the stats of my prince, which in the long term would provide us with benefits. Or a 25% chance for a tutor event. These are really valuable events. And 
I think I'd like to do them. I'm going to sell off a little bit of resources to see if I can start one. So I would like you to tutor Prince Darius, please. Thank you. Okay, so he's... I got a tutor. He's given me a ton of civics, and now he's tutoring my prince. Um, I could rush the scout. I don't know if that's the right move. I definitely want another settler after this scout. You heal. This guy has a free promotion because of its experience. I'm going to take focus. Which is one of the promotions I need for my ambition. The other one is... Yeah, I think we're, we're working on all of our ambitions right now. I, have a, I could either move the scout or I could move the disciple. I think I'd rather move the scout because it's actually worth economic benefits for me. And our year. Uh, adopt a state religion. Worshippers from all over the nation arrive at court seeking direction. It's time to adopt Zoroastrianism as our religion. So we can adopt Zoroastrianism as our state religion for 400 civics. This will reduce discontent in all cities of this religion and also enable the recruitment of disciples in all cities. Um, so if I look at the religion screen, I don't remember where it is. Oh God, uh, is it this one? No, no. The timeline. Oh, cool. We can see the timeline. It's kind of neat. Uh, oh, I guess I, I, I guess, yeah. Um, I will adopt Zoroastrianism as my state religion. Did I get a religion button? There used to be a religion button somewhere. Did they like move it? The ten percent chance per year to spread to new cities. Uh, plus thirty. Some tier beliefs. Got a new turn. Air education. So Prince Darius is my heir. I could get him to study philosophy. He could study politics. He could study tactics or he could study commerce. I think the thing that my empire is going to need the most when I get a new king, when Darius kicks the bucket, is somebody who can smooth out the economy. It's either someone who can smooth out the economy or can handle diplomacy. One of those two things. Will there be a DSL expansion or expansion called Middle Ages? No idea. You should convert to Zoroastrianism. I think now is the time actually as well for me to convert. So yeah, I will. Uh, I will do that. So I think of the two here, uh, either either politics or commerce are the right choice for my empire. And personally, I feel like commerce is going to be the thing that I'm going to struggle with the most. I'm going to not be able to get much in the way of gold here in the next little while. And so I need somebody to be able to handle that for me. I'm going to settle off the coastline. Or do I want to settle on the coastline? It's a good question. Off or on the coastline? I feel like on the coastline is a perfectly reasonable decision. And this is going to be a Sassanid rider city. So I'm not going to be founding a, um, a Kinamid seat. As good as it is, as wonderful as it is, um, I think because we're going for the spoked wheel, we want to build chariots. I think we're going to go for the riders here. Boom. Awesome. 
So there it is. So we have a better idea about the map now. So this is like the southern Indian Ocean. We kind of spawned on the south of the continent. There's a little bit of barbarianage over here. There's Rome over here. Uh, does the tutor's skills affect the effectiveness of his education? Because the tutor has charisma. Uh, it increases the probability that if a tutor has a lot of charisma, the probability that the tutor gives your heir charisma in his tutoring is increased. But I don't think it actually increases the quality. I don't know if it like actually like increases the quality. It just kind of changes the distribution. It might. It changes like which stat they get, but there's always a 25% chance of getting a tutor event. Does that make sense? Did I, did I say that correctly? Like if a tutor has zero stats, there's an equal chance that your heir will get every stat, I think. I don't know. I'd have to double check things. Ugh. Okay. Disciple, maybe convert Greek cities. Greece has not yet, um, has not yet converted to Zoroastrianism. So I'm going to be sending this guy over here to the east to see if I can make that happen. Now that the city is settled, I can move this slinger up here to the northeast. I begin the conquest over here. Um, I do have two scouts. And one of my ambitions is to reveal territory. So that's something that I, 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 need, I need to be very, very careful with how I spend my orders in the next few turns. But I think this delay on attacking this barb camp has been so long that I think I'm going to prioritize it now. Um, and then in this city, I think we go for a worker, then a chariot. Because there's actually really nice resources here for me to improve. So worker, then chariot. Because we'll have spoked wheel by the time that worker comes out. Uh, harvestable resource here on the marble. This is an Egyptian spearman. I wish I had the orders to send these guys over here to kill the Danes. I really do. Kind of sad that this got murdered. But I do I do have a barb unit that I can do like some cursory exploring with. As long as he doesn't get killed. Which he may very well get killed. Oh, he auto-attacked. Uh, your wife has given birth to a daughter, Azar Mikdot. Duchess Apama is now old enough to be tutored by courtiers. So my other daughter, my second in line, is able to be tutored. Uh, a talent for geometry. So Prince Darius has shown remarkable aptitude with mathematics and geometry, rapidly mastering the basics. So I think this is a tutor event, right? Is it? I don't know. Darius asks for the best path to apply these studies. So engineers are always at short supply in the court. This will give me a engineer character who will have a boost for all units against siege and ships. Also gives him a um, boost if he's a general. I think this is the weakest of the choices, unless Engineer has like its own special events. Carpenter is quite useful. Alternatively, I do feel like just getting this extra science here when my science is so low is super powerful. So maybe in the late game, when plus one science isn't a big deal, well, these sorts of things might actually matter for me right now. I think science is the thing. Which is kind of the interesting thing about this game, is even though it's very obvious what, what the optimal decision for me right now is, I can kind of see scenarios where those other decisions would have been better. Ah, you know what? This is actually an open question. Do I want to convert my own city or do I want to convert the Greek city? I feel like getting a positive relationship with Greek and being, being able to get peace with him in before Cyrus dies would be actually pretty important. <clears throat> So I think if I were prioritizing, as much as I want that plus two culture in this city, if I was prioritizing, yes, I'm helping Greece by doing this, but if I convert another one of his cities, the probability that he converts to Zoroastrianism increases. So let's do it. And if he, if he takes that as a state religion, that means we've locked in power for a long time. Um, I'm going to take the experience because I'm, I'm like just going to kill the Danes, I think. It's just like a great way for me to farm a little bit of extra experience. I doubt I'm going to get another level on my on my leader here, but it may happen. So I think priority. The priority here is to fight the barbarians next turn. This turn, the priority is to get the scouts moving. So harvest marble. I don't think harvesting culture is worth the order diversion here. I think I would rather explore. Especially because I have that reveal 40% of the map thing. Um, ah, right. I got a free scout from these guys. Let's 
Gunslinger. Let's go here. My economy is in shambles, but we might be able to pull it back. So we've got scouts in position to potentially explore a bit of an interesting land. Although, mm, that said, undo this. Maybe my scout is best sent to the east. I didn't really explore this way because I thought Greece might be this way. But this might actually be, considering Greece has a city over here and a city over here, there might be some open land this way. I know I can't really explore effectively this way, so I think I might actually send a scout this way. My instincts have been very wrong for scouting direction this game. Um, so I'm going to go against my initial thoughts. It looks like there is some open land over here. Your own city should auto-convert more easily? I think that's true. But I don't actually know. Uh, my grandfather died, and he was the head of, the, of Zoroastrianism. Now... Ma, who is this? He's the head of... He's a Mihranid person. He's now head of it, which is good because it's the, I'm married to a Mihranid person. So a hunter family. So they're happier with me. Uh, oligarch of Arsacid has converted. My prince has been tutored. And so my prince has plus one charisma. That's brilliant. He actually has a great stat distribution now. Uh, really looking forward to seeing him develop into a leader. It could be worth it again to sell off some food and stuff like that to try and tutor him one more time before he comes of age. Uh, the courtier Darvand, the minister, has come under fine fire for his outspoken views on national identity and encouraging domestic development. Darvand, the minister, fears too many resources go towards the discovery of new lands while people in our own cities languish. So this is an opportunity to actually change the relationship of my people here. Uh, so if I go to laws, you can see the Mihranid family has different opinions of different things. So uh, they have plus 10 opinion of the expiration law. Uh, they have plus 10 opinion of tyranny. So if I enact these particular laws, they'll be happier. This is an opportunity to change that relationship. So, for example, if I go to this event again, I can spend 240 uh, to change the normal direction of this family um, so that they actually like something different than what they normally like, or I can reinforce what they usually like. And I think I say it's folly to ignore the world beyond because I think I'm going to be... 10 culture for kills is good. 10 culture for kills is good, but I think... Mm, I, I don't think I can afford the 250 gold here, which means I can't... And this is going to be a militaristic game because I'm playing Persia and I am kind of trying to build up a military here. So I feel like um, this exploration decision is the right one because I'm going to be picking exploration, which will give me a higher relationship with the Mihranids, which will buy me more time before discontent consumes my cities. Um, so that's what I'm going to go for. Boom. I'll upset that minister, which is a little bit unfortunate um, that he's now uh, cautious of me. However, I did liberate him. I've been having a weird thing with my tooltips. Like, they, they kind of reset weirdly. And I, sometimes I can't, like, do the sub tooltip thing. I don't know why. Like, it's very odd. Like if I just now it's working. Okay, it's just like no. Um, yeah, I think I want him to tutor my child again. Forty percent chance of succeeding. Oh, the tutor event percentage did change. Okay, so yeah, the quality of your leader actually does heavily affect things. Oh, never mind. Yeah. It heavily affects not only the potential uh, stat that the hero will get, it also affects whether or not there'll be a tutor event. So more stats is good, especially if it's a stat you want. I'm going to sell a little bit of food because I have it to sell. It's the only thing I'm making reasonable income in. And get him to tutor my prince again. Uh, Getting two, tut two tutors off on a new king is pretty valuable. That's plus two stats for his whole lifetime. Very, very good. 
Tutor is insane. Oh. Well, <laughs> let's see how that goes. Um, right, so we want to start a bit of military conquest over here on the Barbarians. Now, these guys are spooky. Because we don't see what's in the fog of war there. We've also got some more Danes down here. Let's get into a forest where you can't be attacked anymore. Let's bring you forward and attack. Bring you forward and attack. Your job is to absorb hits from my main slinger. Actually, whoops. That was the wrong move because this guy does more damage if he gets closer. So I may as well do that little bit of extra damage and get some exploration in. Yeah. Slightly change. This fight here is my priority. Uh, Parsa is ready for another settler, I think. I'd love to start doing specialists. But I have the option to settle here, and that's going to go away eventually. So I need to seize that opportunity while it's still possible to grab this city over here. I may not be able to defend this city um, from the Danes if they launch an invasion, which is going to suck. But we'll have to see. All right, we got a worker in Atacuana. I reckon a slinger to defend the city. Man, that's a lot of stone. Yeah, it's the best thing to do. Get a slinger in the city. Sit it in the city. Protect. Protect things. I don't think I have camp attack yet, do I? Oh, I do. Okay. Um, so what am I improving here? Let's have a look at this, what the city's possible. I'll probably build my urban, uh, urban stuff to the east and my rural stuff to the west. Got another worker over here. Not much I can do with this particular worker. Uh, I've got a love poem. Uh, Blushing Mandana approaches you with a shy general on second slinger. You know what? That might have been a good move. I'd have to undo so many moves though. Yeah, I prefer the ge I prefer this move actually. The general on the second slinger works for me. All right, so we're going for the settler. We've got a love poem, uh, so I can oligarch Mandana. Man, this lady just really wants my king's um, my king's love. This is the Mithrinid oligarch. Wait, yes. She offered to marry me earlier in the game. All sorts of stuff. Uh, when do you think Civ 7 will be, re will be released? I, w I wouldn't start holding my breath before 2025, to be honest. Um, thank you for the po love poem. I just don't feel the same way. Discipline here is quite useful. Her being my lover is also useful she is the head of the family this would make this family love me um makes their city slightly better their units better that there is value in this i think instead though i'm going to take the discipline that extra gold income again helping me balance my economy uh, and picking me up picking me up that little bit of uh, extra experience on this slinger which means essentially a training discount on getting promotions which is one of my ambitions All right, worker. Um, I do feel like getting a really robust food economy early game can be useful, um, but it's also it also can be a trap. So I feel like I'm going to get another quarry. It's not the greatest quarry I could ever build, but it will give me a slight boost to my stone income. And long term, that's going to allow me to develop my cities vertically. Um, and we build a slinger in here. So I think that's all of our orders. So now our empire is getting big. We have a lot of units and it's becoming difficult 
to manage all of the unit orders. I shouldn't have built this second, this third slinger. This was a mistake for sure. Um, but yeah, we're working on this barb camp. This this will take less orders from now on, so that's good. Gone to minus three with this family. Oof, you're right. Ah, actually, her being in love with me would have been sick as hell. Oh, has the announcement been already? Uh... Hopefully I didn't just like, hang on, let me double check. October 7th at 10, 8, yeah, okay. It was announced last week. So I am good, you gave me a mild heart attack there that I accidentally leaked that this, this was coming to steam. <laughs> Whew. It's because she was already in love with me. Now that's making me reconsider that event. Because if I just got a maximum friendship with her. You know what I mean? Let her be in love with me. I don't know what announcement you're referring to. The, the game the game is coming to Steam. What's the announcement? <sighs> ah, man. Now I'm thinking that her being in love with me is actually super valuable. Although King Cyrus is 47. He's not going to live much longer. That's the thing. I think the fact that he's so old now and that he'll be dying in the next 20 years. I think that means I take the discipline and just get the last little bit of extra gold out of him while he's still alive. Um, goodness, I don't remember what I was doing. Settler. I'm sure your bitter wife... Doesn't mind. Yeah, maybe if she wasn't so bitter, I wouldn't, like, rush to the arms of another woman. Now, we took a decent chunk of damage there. We established legalism. I didn't know that people could do that without me. Other people can do this? Hang on a minute. I am the leader of Zoroastrianism. I thought that that was a thing that I could do. I control the holy city. Other people have that option? Uh, Prince Darius has been uh, sneaking off into the wild after class each day, glowing ever more inspired by na nature. What advice would we give to his budding naturalist? Uh, bruises, cuts and scrapes earned in nature will be valuable lessons. Be as fierce as a lioness defending her cubs. He'll become fierce, or the hills inspire us so all. I feel like... Plus five damage against infantry isn't so good. But being strong in hills is valuable. I'm going to put you into this forest. Lower the amount of damage you're taking. You're not the leader of Zoroastrianism? Yes, I am. This is the holy city here. I'm not this guy, but he's a person inside my empire. So I don't know who made the decision to start that theology. You know what I mean? I founded the religion. I own the holy city. The person who is the head of the religion is inside my borders. But someone else got to pick the, the tier one theology. That feels a bit off to me. I don't know. I don't I don't hate this theology, but I would have liked to have looked at the other ones. You know what I mean? Revelation, dualism. I like Revelation actually. Revelation is pretty based. That spread chance is good. It says you need a disciple to do it. Yeah, yeah, I, I know that bit. But like, I didn't know other people could do that. I didn't know other people could make that choice.
No, but my civilization is in charge of Zoroastrianism. Like, the holy city is here. The head of the religion lives inside my empire. Use it, maybe anyone with it as a state religion can make that decision. Oh, that might be, that might be true. Anyone with it as a state religion. I guess that kind of makes sense that they also have an influence over it. I suppose. Interesting. I didn't think that other people could do that, though. I, di I didn't know that. That's a, it's a new piece of information for me. I have a worker over here, and I don't really have a huge amount that I can do with him. In terms of urban sprawl, I'll probably be spreading a lot around, like, the coastal area here. So I don't want to build any, like, rural improvements too close. Um, now, I believe pastures actually give a boost to farms. Man, I don't know what's up with my, my tooltip hovering here. Like, sometimes I just cannot hover over. I, like, lock the tooltip. But this, it's so weird. I can't hover over this thing. I just, I want to, I want to hover over pasture. I don't, I don't understand. It's like, it's, inc it's actually triggering me a little bit. Does holding shift work? No. I don't understand. Why it won't just, middle click locks the tooltip and then you're supposed to be able to hover over things. I don't want to, I can't, it's like really, it's not working for me. Can't. Can't hover over pasture. Very frustrating. Don't know why it's not working. It's been weird. Um, but yeah, I can maybe build farms in between my pastures. I think I'm good on food. I think I'd like to maybe balance my economy a little bit and get a mine or two here. At least one mine to pay for the city's iron upkeep. Is there a button that locks tooltips like in CK3? Yes, it's middle mouse click and that's what I'm doing to lock it. Um, but for some reason it's not. When, when I lock the tooltip, I'm not able to hover over anything in the tooltip anymore. It's, sometimes it works. But like, then it just stops. And it like randomly decides that I can no longer hover over things in here. You know? It's weird. Used to be able to do infinite tooltips, but it doesn't allow it anymore. I don't know why exactly it's not. It, it might just be like a small UI bug. It's like something that's crept in over the development. Um, the Duchess of Hama. Uh, this is my daughter who's second in line. What will she study? Now, as a second in line daughter, I think I'm going to get her to study a bit of science. To keep my tech going. Egypt's units to the north looking pretty sussy baka. They are probably... I would be surprised if they were going to go break our peace. Right? Next turn, I was thinking of offering them a national alliance. So if they don't declare a war on me then, um, maybe we can secure that. Mm, sorry, that was a mistake. I want to always end my turn in a forest. We're taking a little bit of damage. It's understandable. Rebels have formed a warrior near Parsa. What? Uh, the royal family of Greece visits the court during the feast. Prince Alexander makes a shocking boast. Now, King Philip is old. So, if we piss off King Philip, he'll probably kick the bucket soon. In fact, is he sick and dying? No, but he's probably close to dying. So, making good friends with old Alexander here for the rest of the game when he's young, fit, and ready to take over might be the meme. However, I am a diplomat, so I could just improve opinion with both of them. And I will do that. Thanks to my charming... Charming wit. Uh, let us get the kill. Four years until a unit appears. It's not good. Don't know if we were able to clear this fast enough. Maybe. Might be able to clear it fast enough. We'll see. 
uh, scouts. Now, I have an option here. Talk to Egypt. Hey, Egypt. National Alliance. Minimum peace and minimum friendly. Uh, hold on. We have peace. And our opinion is pleased. Ah. Yeah, they may be looking to declare war on me. I hope they're not. I hope they're not. Because we have really good a relationship. And, like, they would be much rather... I think they would be more likely to declare on someone else. Even if I am weak. You know, Greece... If Greece declares war on me, I'm dead. There's very little I can do. I've, 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 I've played a diplomatic early game in the hopes that the AI will leave me alone. And if the AI just randomly decides to go to war with me, unbidden, like, I have a perfectly good relationship with all these people. Um, then, you know what? That's just the game. It's the way the cookie crumbles sometimes. We're up to 30% world expiration. So we are getting closer to our goal. Um, getting that, that tradition, or that ambition, rather. The game really punishes you for having a weak military. I mean, I've spent like a third of my early game production on units. Like I have a slinger on the way. I've, I literally, the first thing I built in my empire was a slinger. Then I built a settler and then a scout. And now I'm building another settler. So like, I don't know how many more units I'm supposed to have with zero economy this early. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't know, like, when am I supposed to build more units? Because I, I feel like I've built as many units as my economy could sustain. Remember, I had negative, like, three, um, negative three stone a few turns ago. So, you know, what happened to the rebel warrior? I have no idea. To be honest. Uh, tutor mission has led to an event. One day during uh, lessons with his tutor, Darius hears a clamor beyond the palace walls. A group of urchins chased a terrified cat along the street, laughing and striking it with sticks. Darband notices his pupil's interest and challenges him to intervene. What does the royal tutor advise? Uh, attack the boys and drive him away. This will give him plus one courage. Not bad. Uh, distract the boys with a humorous story. This is an opportunity to actually pick which stat block I get a level up in. And I feel like my weakest thing right now is gold. Lots of gold will play well later. Maybe. Maybe. Hmm. So I get to pick the stat. That makes it so much harder. I think I'm going to take the discipline. I need that gold. Um, right. This is going to be a hard decision, actually. Um, I think I don't build shrines. So I don't have the stone income. But it is actually a tough decision here to not go for barracks. Barracks are super valuable. They give you a 20% increase in your training, which means I can build a lot of military. Uh, it also gives me rally troops. Man, I really want barracks. But I also really want labor force to get slavery. Because that's an ambition. So I feel like I got to pick a little labor force. I just got to. Just have to. Just have to. Um, I don't really have a way to deal with this right now. Cannot hurry if the city is damaged. I'm triggered. None of my other cities. Mm. I forgot about that. I thought he would attack the worker and then I'd be able to rush something out. That's triggering. The city getting damaged increases the discontent and also lowers its productivity. 
Two percent production loss from damage. Man, if I had just done this last turn, I'd be able to... <laughs> With the power of rewind! Hello, YouTube. Control click to undo an entire turn. End of previous turn. Oh, the power of YouTube rewind. Look at this. This is why I love this game. Just uh, insert you in there. Hurry that slinger and then end my turn. <laughs> All right, easy peasy. Uh, uh, that changed the event, so he got courage instead. That's the punishment I take, okay? I'll accept it. But I have a unit now. Hey, Dennis. Remember when you were a kid and people said, hey, you got nothing nice to say. Maybe I don't say it at all. I think it's time. I think it's time you thought about that lesson. Oh, we crit him. Perfect. Okay, so I took this city site. Beautiful. It's now mine. Which means another settler. It's potentially on the cards. Uh, okay. This is the most efficient thing that I can do with this because it's a resource. It would give me extra growth in the city. Maybe not the most perfect thing ever. Uh, I got an assignment. A letter arrives by courier for Duchess of Pama. Dear Cyrus, as part of my instruction at the Academy, my tutors to direct me to write to you. All has been going well. I've little complaint. I've made some other times. I must carry on. Ah, uh, so she just gets experience. Cool. Nice event. Scared to scout around that corner with no moves left. We're up to 33%. So we're close to we're close to both of these. This is gonna be our hardest one, but we do have a good amount of training. We have leveled up units. We have units getting experience that'll make it a little bit easier. Why is he attacking the city over the slinger? I don't understand. Silver Jubilee, a uh, special year. King Cyrus has reigned for 25 years. How should we prepare for the celebration? So I can get, I can lose food and get growth and uh, take away unhappiness in my capital. I can get blessed. This is, this is where this tool to bug gets me here blessed so i think this is just like luck uh i should take another wife <laughs> poggers 20 you rule a kingdom for 25 years you get a free wife uh let's see I'm going to take Blessed. I don't know what Blessed does. It seems the most interesting to me. I think Egypt is going to kill me. I think we're actually dead. It's fitting. Does Urban... This unit may die, actually. Let me heal that health real quick. Can I, can I promote you with something here? Hmm. With Greece converting, you could secure a peace treaty, maybe? Oh, that's true. 
Uh, I could do a foreign marriage. Oh, foreign marriage, maybe? Foreign marriage, Prince Darius. 100 civics. Strengthens my relationship with, with Egypt. Think I'm going to go that route. Foreign marriage with you. And then we'll do... What? Ah, I'm already doing it. I'm already doing a mission, I think. Where am I? Requires ambassador. Oh, right. I need to get a chancellor, too. Hmm. Uh, let's see. Somebody young. Uh, ooh, 15 training per turn. That would actually be huge for me getting my five unit promotion. So I'm going to take Mithridates the Younger, who's 38 years old. It's going to cost me a little bit of growth, but I think that's well, 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 well worth it for that extra training. Uh, and then I'm going to get a foreign marriage with uh, Egypt. Prince Darius, go get married, buddy. Now that Prince Darius has completed his study of commerce, how shall we contribute to the court? So he can be a diplomat, I like it, or an orator. Orators, uh, as leader, recruit tribal mercenaries with legitimacy. Ooh. That would actually be it. This would be an incredible way for me to increase my military size because I'm already allied with the Gauls. It would give me a huge, huge boost to my civics per turn, too. Diplomat is really good. I'm tempted. I'm tempted. Being able to spend legitimacy for an army seems like a good trade. It means I don't have to build quite a military. It means I'm very well defended. It means I have units that scale okay. They scale okay. They're not amazing. They're kind of okay. They kind of fall apart, though, is the problem. Um, you can appoint a chancellor? I did. Is your Gaul unit in the north still alive? Nah, it was murdered. It was it was murdered by Rome. I, I, I didn't want to spend orders on keeping it alive. Maybe it would have been worth the exploration, but it only explores like five tiles a turn, so... Um, barb units should get plus one fog range, in my opinion, to help with like, you know... Situations like this where maybe I would have decided to spend the orders on them would have made the game more a more interesting choice. A uh, powerful and influential politician or a diplomat. This is a tough choice. I think I already had a diplomat. Man, it makes this makes diplomacy so much easier though. If he's a diplomat, orator, or, orator gives me the opportunity to recruit mercenaries though, which is super based. Now the big thing though. Is that uh, charisma as a governor? It means I could build up my capital city huge. And I'm getting to the point now where I may, by the time this guy rolls around, as my next leader, I might be able to do some crazy. Can I? Can hurry projects with orders. Oh, man. I think I'm going to go for... Oh, man. This is tough. He's going to marry... Well, I have Egypt to back me up because I'm going to marry an Egyptian woman. I'm going to try to build an alliance with Egypt. So I think I'm going to go for Orator, which will allow me to develop my capital city really, really quickly when he becomes king. I'm going to put him as the governor of that city and try to develop it into a crazy powerful city. Yeah. Yeah. All religion opinions plus 40 plus that trickles down to both. Yeah, okay. Yep. Orator it is. Orator it is. Okay, we got our first worker. We have elephant camp. Do I actually have camp tech? I do have camp tech. I think I do horse first though. That's plus one order per turn. Orders are so precious. Persia has such a good order economy. It actually makes me really happy. Um, and then we just go straight chariot. Boom. Chariot. Need the military unit. Saddleborn. It'll be good against infantry. Defending. In particular. Um, 
Okay, explore. Yes, ancient ruin, seashore find. While exploring a remote stretch of seashore, we discover a curious seashell scattered among the shallows. This shell, when grounded with powder, produces a pleasant purple dye that is perfect for fabrics. This is like Tyrian purple or something, right? Purple dye. Uh, significant discovery, 34 science. It's two turns of science, not great. A city can gain a triumph, which is plus two production per year. That's powerful. I feel like that plus two production per year in a city that I'm already going to be building military out of, super good long term. Boom. We take that plus two production. That shaves the turn off that chariot. And remember, every unlike other games, every turn in this game is like hyper precious. So there's more Dane cities over here. So I think, I think what we do here is um, we focus on settling this city and then gearing up for more war with the Danes. Because if we can, if we can nab one, two, three more Danish cities, we are in. We're in the contention to actually, you know, explode onto the scene here and take over. Oh my God, they have eight cities. Rome has eight cities. Greece has five cities Egypt has five cities I've got three about to be four so yeah life is hard Danes have so many cities and Gaul had two it's just the look of the dice I'm so disappointed like I got an alliance with the Gauls and they had one city um I'll be right back Alrighty, how are you guys feeling? How's life? Hang on here one second. Alright, All right. <clears throat> I thought that city's name was Pasta. Do I need to eat something? Probably. Alright, what do we got? We got a scout. Got no orders for this turn. This annoying unit. Hitting my city, slowly chipping away. And it's production. Uh, doing the crack with potato. Is that how they say it in Ireland? No, you say you're, you're having the crack. You're having. Crack is something you have and it means fun. D doing the crack is inappropriate in every country. Uh, a new marriage proposal from Egypt has arrived for your son, Prince Darius. Perfect. So this was, we sent a request for a marriage. Uh, let's see, equestrian. So I could get a charisma wife or a wisdom wife. I feel like wisdom wife is better um, because she's going to become a queen mother and she's where like most of my tech is coming from. So I think wisdom wife is the move here. Future proofing my tech problems. Let's keep attacking. Good, good, good. You took a lot of damage. That's understandable. But these guys can't do much damage to you. But. That said, I don't really have a safe place to retreat you to. That's the thing. I think this is the best option. It's like out of the way enough. 
And if I take Herbalist, I can pop you in here and heal you next turn. You might be able to get a kill and then heal your way out of this problem. We'll see. It's tough. It's tough. Worker in the capital, just kind of idly sitting by as the city gets sieged. As you would expect from any normal worker. Um, it would be nice to have a bit more iron income. I do need to start to like think about, though, what I want income-wise. Uh, another farm... Yeah, iron is going to become a main... Iron is already a maintenance resource in here, right? Um, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Just tried launching Civ 6. What is the 2K launcher? It's... Every, every company nowadays wants to have their own launcher because it's a great way to, like, track and create analytics and data and blah, 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 blah. It's annoying, I agree. Um, but the big advantage of having a launcher is that you can... Um, there's a lot of companies out there that offer services to do uh, like analytics and data tracking and uh, like services that like are useful for your company um, for in terms of like market research and like what are your players doing in the game and the new 2k uh, launcher i believe uses uh, xala some of the services from xala um to i don't know exactly what it's doing but i know it's the data driven stuff can i step on that same tile oh i kicked him out yeah i think i want another quarry here um nine game visuals look great i think the game visuals are kind of like they're they're a bit like hit they're they're either hit or miss some people are going to look at them and be like oh kind of reminds me of civ 5 i like them it's very classical and some people are going to look at them and say eh you know uh, it looks i don't know it doesn't look great i think that's you know ev everyone's going to have a different opinion on that i you know i personally my nuclear take is the graphics are okay like um and like technically they're fine that i have no problem with the graphics they're okay uh i have a very big preference for uh simple graphics to the point where uh, the more complicated your graphics become like the more bloom and lighting and shaders all this the less the less i like your game uh it actually just becomes ugly to me so yeah that's my opinion uh so my daughter who's second in line she's 16 she's thriving so i can get plus one wisdom on her plus one wisdom would be nice on my daughter affable is good but i think i'm going to take wisdom because that little bit of extra science pays dividends um but yeah that's my own per that's just my own personal take on it like i think the graphics are fine okay this is not good i need to like find somewhere to hide this guy hopefully they don't hopefully these guys can't see me No, oh, my rabbit just did a flop. If you don't know, a flop is when a rabbit uh, jumps on their side, basically. Like, they just lie down. And it's really, really cute when they do it. Okay, we're taking a hit. Yeah, taking hits. Don't like taking these kind of hits at all. Uh, influence mission. Uh, recently been thinking about improving relations with uh, da, 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 her head of this family. She's angry with me. Why? Why is she angry? Why can't I? Why is she angry? I think there's some Z level targeting going on here or something with the mouse. I don't understand. Why can't I? Angry? I want to see why she's angry. Okay, let me do it that time. <sighs> she's proud and we're different. Okay. So I could theoretically influence her for free. Uh, it could lower my, my legitimacy, but it could also improve her opinion of me. And it'll give me experience and it's a free mission. I'll do it. Getting a slight opinion boost with her might be useful. Pretty sure she wrote a poem and you said no. <laughs> I said no and left. Uh, let's get ourselves another camp. Camps are useful. Ha 
20 wood for half an order per turn. I am running out of wood. Something to consider. Uh, you know, they got medication for that. Step you into the city. I could kill this this turn. Or I could heal and kill it next turn. I think killing it this turn makes sense. Just get it away from my city. Make this kill. Then he'll do a little bit of damage and I can heal the hero unit next turn. As long as my... As long as King Cyrus doesn't die, I'm fine. Really playing it down to the wire here. Uh, that was not what I meant to do. I meant to explore very, 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 very small little steps. 36% of the world explored. Cool. And you are going to hide in the forest. 37%. Very, very close to our ambition here. I'd like to hit at least two of these ambitions before Cyrus dies. He is 53. So his chance of dying isn't really high. Uh, the Mihranid family converted. Her, her converting actually gave me a huge opinion boost with it, which is fa fantastic. Uh, can't AI other factions also use influence other characters, just making people randomly or like or dislike you? Uh, kind of. They'll make them improve their own opinion with that character. Uh, the Shoemaker, this is a... Oh, here's a fun thing. If you're playing this game yourself and you see this little button here and you click it, it'll actually take you to the Wikipedia page that inspired the event in the game. So this is the story of Simon the Shoemaker, uh, who is an associate of Socrates. Uh, so not permitted to enter the prominent city courts, Duchess Apana and her friends spend their days in the surrounding market with an erudite Shoemaker and his group of uh, merchant philosophers, learning the skills of philosophy and debate. While many former scholars refuse to recognize such teachings, Apama seems to have been enriched by these experiences. So she will either become witty, humble, righteous, or bold. And she became bold, which gives her plus two uh, military courage. This is a strength of her character, and it makes her have disagreements with some of uh, the other people in the world. All right, we've got philosophy studies. Uh, should we, should we, no longer philosophy student. Ah, so I can make her a builder or a scholar. Now, her role as a builder could potentially be useful if I wanted to use her as a governor. Uh, builders have unique abilities. If I could just hover over this. Man, I don't understand. I don't understand why the tooltip thing is disagreeable sometimes. And there it is again. Okay, can I... Okay. That time it let me do it. Uh, builder. They can serve as a governor or a chancellor. They can add urban tiles. This is a power, powerful ability. Multiple workers can build improvements. So you can make a stack of workers running around all together. And it makes building workers cheaper. Ugh. I, 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 I. Scholar is better. They can. Yeah, scholar is better. That plus eight science is huge for me right now. I mean, that 24 gold is great, but 8 science brings me up to 25 science. That's pretty respectable, considering I've built 0 science things in the early game. Let's take a moment to heal on you. Take a moment to heal on you. Uh, let's really think about our moves here. I think I'm going to prioritize settling this and conquering over here. Which means this unit is going to want to move this direction as a priority. And I may want to add a general and promote it. I think this turn I will promote it. Uh, yeah, fighting in urban tiles seems like a pretty... This is from being in urban tiles. This seems pretty good. Slavery in three turns, Pog. <laughs> Whew. You be careful with what you type in chat there. Um, so now in my capital, my economy is weak. I could get myself a warrior now. I think it's about time I got myself a warrior. Um, I really want more settlers. But I do think taking the time to get a warrior here. To keep expanding. Because right now my, my main focus is on expansion. Uh, and consolidating my military. I am getting a chariot, so maybe a warrior is redundant. Although these fortresses over here are going to have a lot more units. And it's going to take a lot more military to actually take them. So maybe having a warrior and a chariot to bring to these fights is appropriate. 
I do want to prioritize my my builders, however, because there are important resources that I don't have online yet. Um, I think I will spend the money. So if you hold down Alt, you can automatically spend the money re required to buy the resources that you're missing to build an improvement. And I will just buy the the wood here because this half an order here is huge. Just again, half an order is just a crazy, crazy, crazy amount of orders. It's like five legitimacy. Um, I have spent a lot of my legitimacy this game. I should really be exploring to get this legitimacy. So I'm going to delay that settler moving because if I can get like one or two more percent of the world explored, it's a huge deal. Using a lot of my orders on improvements though. I need to get my garrisons up, which is why I'm glad labor force is finishing soon. Uh, we exerted influence over Oligarch. She becomes influenced by me, which gives me 40 opinion with her. Perfect. That'll improve the opinion of the Mifranid family. Uh, word of our knowledge of Spoked Wheel has traveled far. Ooh. Now, I, theoretically, she would owe me a favor if I give her this technology. This is a really powerful technology. This is 250 science worth of giving away. That's a lot of science to give away and a really powerful technology in general to a civilization that tends to have good chariots. Also, thank you, Popalop, for uh, resubscribing as a member. Thank you. I appreciate you. That's a tough. That's a tough sell. However, owing me a favor is like huge. Oh, it's 20 opinion. Twenty opinion. We're trading. Maybe, maybe if I did this, and like, ah, no. Where's the head of the religion? And I like influenced this guy. I could get an alliance with Egypt. I think I think I'm going to make the attempt. So I'm going to give them this. So they owe me a favor. Hope that King Cyrus doesn't die soon. Then I will sell a little bit of food. And influence this guy. in the hope that that will give me what I need in order to get an alliance with Egypt. So I'm hoping that all works out for me. You do want that ally though? Yeah, true. It said you can make her spy master now. Uh, make who my spy master? I don't have the spy master position open yet. So marriage offer. Um, new marriage proposal for your daughter, Duchess Apama. Is my daughter, who's second in line. Uh, this is the Mihranids or the Sassanids. This is really just who do I want better opinion with? Both are pretty important to me right now. I would say Mihranids are maybe more important. So that would kind of bias me towards this. What's the dowry like? So the dowry is slightly better. Ooh, plus three order dowry. Also pretty value. Have this guy be a general who likes me courage discipline dowry three orders is huge i think i take this guy plus he's a zealot Ooh, a heroes though can heal in neutral territory yeah heroes are strong let's keep healing Crusader Kings and Civ 6 combined? Kind of. Probably a bit more like Civ 5. A bit more reminiscent of Civ 5. Uh, Artikoa got its slinger. So now there's a slinger defending this city. I will just put that unit to sleep. Because this unit exists to be a military unit protecting the city and providing a defense. I may even go up to 2. I think actually having... Um, Used to be that having a unit inside a city's borders would improve your relationship with that city.
Um, so maybe I want to do a Zoroastrian disciple here. Maybe consider upgrading my religion. Might be worth. <clears throat> it might be worth. You need walls first. That's right. I think you're right, actually. Um, now, it could also be time that I considered maybe a little bit of a specialist here. Uh, a stone cutter would increase my stone income. Get rid of a citizen. Citizens just eat food. And uh, they just eat money. And they don't do anything. This would allow me to start getting more science. I don't have a reason to settle. I do have a reason to go for another archer in here. To defend this city. Um, I do feel like the stone cutter giving me extra three stone per year. And one civic per year in this city would allow me to urbanize the city faster. So... I think I'll go Stonecutter to try to improve my economy slightly. I feel like I've spent a lot of time building military, which should make me a little bit scarier on the world stage. Much stronger, stronger. Ugh. Well. You may be interested to learn, for better or worse, Duchess Azar Mikdot is showing signs of taking after her mother. She's going to become bitter or romantic, isn't she? Uh, okay, she's wanting her debauched. She became romantic. Romantic isn't terrible because it does increase your chance to have babies. Um, it's not bad. How about the baby? Uh, Duchess of Pama, Mihrinid. So, free theology. Ooh, this might have been an event someone else got. We can get free theology, Gnosticism, uh, which will give me... Ooh, so I can get a free theology. Now here's the thing. What are my theology choices? I have revelation, which allows me to spread my religion and gives me bonuses from temples and gives me a boost from orthodoxy. I don't know what orthodoxy is. See, I'm, I'm in territory where I'm a little bit out of my depth as a player of this game. Okay, there we go. Um, orthodoxy, come on. Come on, play nice. Come on. Come on. There we go. Uh, disciples can purge world religions. Ooh. I like Revelation. It's expensive to upkeep, though. Can hurry specialists with orders. Ooh. Orthodoxy feels like it might be the kind of direction I want to go. Orthodoxy plus Revelation. Um, highly spreadable. More orders from temples. What about dualism? So dualism gives more like syncretic. This will. God damn it! Eh. I don't know why. I don't know why the tooltips are acting up. It's really, it's really upsetting actually, as a player, because like, they just don't. Come on, just sh let me show me. Tolerance is a law. Can build all non-state religion disciples. Ooh. Minus two discontent per non-state religion. So this is a lot more happiness here. This has potential. Dualism has potential. What about Gnosticism? What does Gnosticism do? Uh, monotheism is its is its thing. Come on, play nice tooltip. Come on, tooltip. There we go. Uh, monotheism is plus one order per state religion cities. Ooh, monotheism seems like it would be real good for a warlike game. If I want to transition to war in the late game, monotheism might be the sus. Extra civics from archives, very highly technical. I mean, Gnosticism is kind of good. Revelation is really good for spreading. That would be more diplomatic if I wanted to have a one world religion. Judaism hasn't even been founded. <sighs> it's 
I think I'm actually going to take this. I'm going to take Gnosticism because this actually plays potentially really well into my late game plans of going to war um, by having a very, very strong religion with monotheism. I should have really checked what the alternative option was for monotheism. Polytheism? Build, yeah, mo no, 100% going to be monotheism that we're going for this game. Uh, speaking of, I'd like to make sure that if I'm going to be going for monothe monotheism, I'd like to make that a target. Just so I know when I should be picking it up. So I will have to pick up Divination. It's unfortunate. It is a prioritization for me now to get that. Because it, it works well with monasticism. Actually, speaking of, what works well with legalism? Centralization. Come on. I don't know why these tooltips are acting up. Centralization. Seems quite good. Uh... What is the option? Centralization or vassalage? Oh yeah, we'll be taking centralization. Mm -hmm. Big time. Big time taking centralization. Requires aristocracy. Yeah, that's already a priority. Awesome. Make it actually a direct priority. Okay, so we spent a bit of time thinking about our religion there. That was like, man, this is this is why I love this game. Um, the combat, in my opinion, kind of like doesn't land with me personally, but that's because I'm not really a warlike player. I'm trying to be, but the actual like depth of like, okay, let me check this menu and then this menu. What are the consequences of this decision? Okay. If I take this decision, this happens. And then what if I do this other decision? And like that whole like decision tree of like exploring the potential of a game. I think I'd like to harvest here. No. I think that was the right choice. It revealed all these resources for me. I have a settler. Do I bring the settler here to settle? I think getting the city down isn't a priority. Slinger comes forward. Spend a turn to heal. Slinger forward. Hmm. I think moving the settler was a mistake. I will take this heal. You'll come forward and attack. Scout. Really close to this ambition. Scared to explore too much. Okay, Greece and Egypt are on a border with each other, which is fantastic. Did you ever try a Byzantium Hippodrome chop strat in Civ 6? I think I did. It's a fun one. We might, maybe we could do that uh, later in the week. People have been asking for another Byzantium game in Civ 6 for a long time. I think it's about time I gave the people what they wanted. Egypt is now at war with the Danes. Okay, I'm okay with this. Uh, King Philip has died, so perfect. My son has been feeling poor and he's ill. Okay, that's not good. My daughter became greedy. Ugh, it's not good. She's hurting my, my civics income. <sighs> my third in line daughter is ready to be tutored. I'm sorry, but the third in line daughter is not getting tutored. That's just, that's just how it is. Now, we're actually being given an interesting choice here. Uh, we could... Arguably, food is our strongest tech, our, our strongest resource. So we might not need the food boost, but it is actually a really cheap way to redraw the cards in the deck. And we know that there's things in, in this deck that we really want. So let's have a quick look at our tech tree. And kind of make some, you know, decisions about maybe where we want to go. So we know that Spearman has been offered to us, which is this Phalanx here. And we know that Phalanx leads to citizenship. And citizenship is pretty good because it gives you access to the courthouse. Can I, come on, tooltip. I don't understand. Don't, don't, I don't understand why I want the tooltips lock. Am I, am I, am I doing something wrong? Um. Old world tool tips. Am I doing two? Tool tips. I don't know why. Is, is, is there someone who's played the game more than me? That understands why 
Have you messed around much with religion in Old World? No. I'm, this is one of my first games to really do it. Does anyone know why when I when I lock a tooltip, there's like a 50-50 chance that it'll actually like let me hover over stuff in that tooltip. There it is. Like, right? It just... It used to work perfectly every time. And now there's like some Z-level Z thing. This is causing an issue. But anyway, let me see. Courthouse. Courthouses are really good because they actually let you urbanize your city real fast. Not only do they give you a boost to your civics, but if you can actually manage to build the scribe who is in it, he will also further boost your civics and then give you gold from your citizens. So this this direction here has huge potential for developing our cities urban, urban-wise, and it also gives us access to another law, divine rule, and legal code. Pretty good, pretty good. I don't know. Hey, Kevin Cle Clevener, thank you so much for becoming a member of the channel. I'm going to just put a pin on citizenship, make it an important tech. I don't think navigation is quite as important. Markets, I don't even have lumber mills, so I don't think markets are going to be a thing for me because markets require. If I can just make the tooltip thing play nicely. Come on, play nicely. Why are you not playing nicely? Oh my god, please. Oh my god. It's really... There we go. They cost wood upkeep. And I don't even have forestry tech yet. So I think before I'm going to go for navigation... Um, ooh. Colonies and serfdom, though. Diplomat opinion, low training, movement bonus long. Mm. I think I'm going to target... Uh, I think I'm going to target forestry as an important tech. Citizenship, forestry... Aristocracy and monasticism are kind of important texts for me now. Uh, yeah. I really also want rhetoric, I believe. So yeah, having done a little bit of an analysis, analysis of the tech tree, um, phalanx could be really useful because it leads to a tech that we really want. However, the danger is... There's another tech that we really want in our draw pile. Um, and so maybe picking one of these shorter techs, while it doesn't fit into our overall plans, does maybe get us closer to something that we really want. So it's, it's actually a genuinely tough choice here. Because spearmen are actually super useful too. They take iron, they take iron and wood, and they're really good against fighting, um, fighting cavalry. <sighs> Man, I really feel like it's a choice between administration. I don't. I don't think navigation factors in at all. Like even even slightly. Um, here's the thing, though. Uh, I really want spearmen, and I really want the food boost. But my gold is really bad. I need to start building treasuries. I need to start building treasuries because my gold income is absolutely devastating. So. So I have shift click works better. Shift click. Uh, shift click. Shift click. Click. Shift. Shift click. No, it's just... It, I think it's like a Z-level targeting thing. Like the mouse is trying to hover over things underneath t the tooltip. But yeah, I'm, go I'm going for administration here because I need to build a couple of treasuries. Ah, okay. So now we get the choice between slavery and freedom. This is going to make every city in my empire slightly more upset every turn. However, it's going to give me five orders per turn. And considering we're just about to embark on a really big war against the Danes, I think slavery here absolutely is the choice. You throw in the fact that it's also an ambition of mine and it'll get me 10 legitimacy. That 10 legitimacy translates into an extra order every turn. This is actually worth uh, six orders per turn and plus 10 opinion with like most of the characters in the game. So yeah, I really do think it's time to take slavery. Boom. 
Now we're making 22 orders per turn. I'm now known as the strong. So my legitimacy went up twice there. Now my, my legitimacy is huge. 22 orders per turn. Once you're hitting those 20 numbers, that's when I start feeling like really comfortable in this game. It's turn 31, we're at 22 orders per turn. We're making progress. Uh, we're now the strong, so we get an event. Because our Cognomen upgraded, which is the name that we're known by, the strong, uh, we can get another ambition. Seize two foreign cities. Or field eight generals. I think fielding eight generals is the more possible one. Do I? I don't even have eight units though. That's the thing. It's a lot of training to do this, but I think this is the more likely one. I don't think I'm going to be taking a city from anybody now. Um, so, I mean, failing an ambition isn't the worst thing in the world. I could just say I'm not feeling ambitious, which is fine. But fielding eight generals is actually really easy. Um, like I have four possible generals on this unit alone like three of them from this family so that just means I might need to build a few more units that's really what that boils down to if I own this city take a moment to heal um, let's get this kill what is this worth? it's worth 7 iron harvest 46 gold I think I will take the gold for the harvest. I'm about to hit another ambition. Ooh, yes. Reveal 40% of the map. That's second ambition. Plus 10 legitimacy. Amazing. Perfect. Another 10 legitimacy. That's another order per turn. And we found a uh, a thing. An ancient an ancient uh, relic or whatever it's called. Ancient holy site. God damn it, I don't remember what they're called. Uh... Ancient ruins. Sealed within a musty tomb, surrounded by strange signs and sigils, our scouts discover an, an ancient but surprisingly well-preserved scroll. Thinking this is unsettling, they bring it to you for judgment. Uh, while the writing is an unknown language, it's oddly simple. It feels as if you could quickly learn it if you develop some time for the task. So I could become exotic, which would give me a boost to my charisma. Um, but King Cyrus is quite old now, so maybe stat boosts are not the right move. I could get a court scholar court scholar is quite powerful that's a pretty big science boost right there or i could destroy it and gain legitimacy i'm going to go for the court scholar uh because that's pretty powerful i'm also now known as the noble so i'm now plus 70 legitimacy my legitimacy is like skyrocketing um and we just picked up uh zer van docked the scientist now she hates me so i need to improve my religion with her I, I, my opinion with her so I think I'm going to try to convert her to my religion and influence her because uh, the amount of science that she gives me is dependent on how much she likes me um, I'll be able to show you guys that now in a second so if I recruit her and I go to my court Zer Zervandokt is a member of the Mihranid family her opinion of me is upset you know what I'm going to do I'm going to quickly restart the game um, start a new folder the uh, live stream Persia create hang on quit the desktop I'm, just, I'm having I'm having I, I think it because it was working fine when the game started I'm just gonna give it the old restart Uh, resume. Oh no, this isn't the turn that loaded the la latest autosave. Uh, Oh, did I not save it? Oh, well, I'm dumb. I guess I just end the turn and go through that whole process I just did there. Um, I don't remember what I was doing. I got distracted there. 
Uh, treasury. We'll keep slaves. Strong. Oh, I'm devastated that I messed that up. I'm no, 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 strong. Field eight generals. I don't remember what I was doing. What the hell? Does anyone remember what I was doing? I'm having brain fog. What the hell was I doing? I think I like went here, I harvested the silver, and I stepped here. And I saw this, revealed the map, perfect, and I captured this. I got the court scholar. She joined. I was improving my relationship with this lady. I accidentally rolled a completely different scholar. It was not intentional. This one likes me way more and gives me way more science. It's kind of cool, actually. Uh, yeah, so I'm getting a certain percentage of her science because she likes me a certain amount. So what I can do is I can be like, hey, you know what? You only like me so much. So maybe I can improve my relationship with you. But she actually seems to like me a lot more, so I'm just going to let that lie. Um, God damn, it's a lot of science. Imprison, intercession, convert. Patriarch Suk the Younger is at least pleased. He's cautious of me. I've already influenced somebody. So I could convert by someone or directly intervene. Ah. He doesn't like me enough to convert on my behalf. So I have to do it myself. Got it. I'll probably try to convert it to my religion next turn. Settler, builder. I built another quarry. I think I'd like another mine. I also killed the Dane unit. Oh, that's right. Um, I'd like another mine. Have to spend 96 gold for the wood. Wood's going to get more expensive as time goes on, usually. And food tends to get cheaper. Sell off 100 food there. Just make, make what I said manifest. Um... Stone is going to become increasingly important as time goes on, so I'm going to build a little triangle of quarries here to try and take advantage of this. Slinger plus plus, I think you healed. I also would like to promote you. Plus 25% combat strength from trees seems pretty good to me. Head this way. And then we'll get to work on clearing out these two encampments. Don't care if that settler is not going anywhere. It's fine. He's eating food, but like, who cares? We have him ready. Plus, we're gonna we're, we're making way more orders now, so our options are opening up. Uh, Greece has begun construction of the Hanging Gardens. That's understandable. It's about the time I would expect some of these early game wonders to start going. Uh, Cyrus the Noble is severely ill. I am sick. Okay. The probability that I die next turn is very high. I had forgotten that I was trying to get an alliance with Egypt. Reject your war with Egypt. Uh, this becomes critical that I completely forgot that. National alliance. I don't have the resources anymore. Oh. Damn it. I need Cyrus to live for two more, for three more turns. I forgot I was trying to get an alliance with Egypt. That's painful. People were telling me, oh, convert your religion, do all this stuff. And then I spent all my, spent all my civics and forgot that I was supposed to get an alliance. Damn it. That could, that could actually be game ruining for me. Um, I may not recover from that. So in order to free up this slinger, I need to get this uh, settler out here. Can you hire a physician? No. Here's 
You're in range of this now. Five unit promotions. Anyone I can cheaply promote. I'll promote this chariot once it's built, I think. And then, the, oh, I can't risk. I need to do this legitimacy now. Um, so I will do... Horsebane seems okay. Right, there's another legitimacy. Boom. We're now known as the Glorious. So, so the really good thing about this is half of this legitimacy is inherited by your successor. Are there decent lads for the... I think... I'd like to add a general here. Uh, plus 28% chance to crit. I'm going to take you. I won't be able to field eight generals, unfortunately, but before I die. But I may be able to do it after I die, and then that gives me half, half the benefit. So I got a worker over here. Let's get this quarry. I want to get this mine online. Ninety-six gold plus forty gold per turn. That's perfect, actually. It's going to really help out my gold income. Okay, I think I can break this. And then I can take this afterwards. Yeah, I'm feeling good that I might be able to do this and take this before Egypt takes note. Got a chariot coming. I could send that up and around. You, my little scouty boy. My scouty lord. Oh, that was the wrong tile. I meant to go onto the hill because hills give you more vision. You're just going to sit here because you're nice and safe. Cyrus, please don't die. Please don't die, Cyrus. I need you to live for three more turns. Uh, our vassal patriarchs. Okay, the younger secure peace. I'm not securing peace with these guys. It's going to upset that family. But I'm actually literally in battle with them as we speak. I've spent countless lives... And years at war with these guys and you want to piece them out like uh, read the room dude okay we can do a lot of damage if we get nice and close here this gets me a level up plus one discipline shield bearer yeah let's get that discipline <clears throat> settler do, 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 do. Much left of the stream? Nah, we do usually do a four-hour stream. We'll be streaming this game again tomorrow, though. We've, we've only just set up the game. And you can always watch the VOD. The VODs are available if you go to the front page of my YouTube channel. Um, Alright, we got ourselves a settler. We drop onto Persia. The city-state here. Where, now, where exactly do I settle? There's a button I'm looking for. B, N, no, sorry, V... N, M, yeah, there we go. So which resources do I claim depending on where I go? If I go here, I get the honey in game. If I go here, I get the silver and incense. Getting the goats is pretty based in a, as a pasture sieve. But the game is also super good for camps. This might be a hunter city because it dies here too for fishing boats. I may never spread the borders over there from this city, though. That's the thing. That's the thing. That's the thing. Let's go here. Do I go there or do I go there? I'm trying to pick where I go. Silver is super good. I need that online ASAP. And it's camps and nets. If I settle here on the left, I'm definitely going for, for um, riders to get that camp boost. Plus, it'll improve my relationship with the most important family in my empire right now. Um, sorry, hunters. But maybe there's a better city. That's the thing. Oh, did not mean to put a defensive marker down. Because, like, maybe... Yeah, maybe this is the hunter city. So, if this is the hunter city... This is the cleric city and then this is the rider city and then this is the hunter okay 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 
Yeah, 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 yeah. So this is actually a cleric city. This will improve my relationship with the clerics and reduce my relationship with every other sieve. But that's okay. Hmm. Um, is that the tile I want to do it on? Yes. Captures the most resources. Clerics go here. Boom. Just wondering, uh, thanks to Typicus, just wondering if you were trying the five-hour stream today. We'll catch the VOD tomorrow. Literally the greatest of all time. How's this a question? What? What are your thoughts on the game? I think it is, uh, it's the kind of game where you play a little bit and you're like, this is okay. And then you digest the game a little bit and you're like, actually, but what if I did this? And then you go back and you play it a little bit more. And then you're like, yeah, that was an exciting strategy. And you walk away from the game again and you come back and you play it and you're like, but what if I did this? Oh, but wait a minute now like you spend so much time discovering new things and then you walk away you digest it a little bit and then you come back and you play the game and you're like i have a strategy because like the first i want to say five six maybe actually like first 10 times i played this game i kind of was meandering about and now i'm at a point where i've played about 100 hours of the game and i'm like okay i'm actually doing strategies now and my strategy this game as persia was to do like play to my strengths and use my ability to found a religion to get my diplomatic situation in order, which has totally worked out, by the way, because I have really good relations with my neighbors, which is usually not a thing that I that I can say. Um, is this elephant dancing? Uh, I think the elephant's animation. what <laughs> i think the elephant's animation is like playing on a higher speed than it's supposed to is it all the elephants are doing this where's the other elephants because like the horses look normal this elephant is fine nothing wrong with this elephant just this elephant is just on warp speed, dude. Uh, right, so I have a chariot to bring to the battle. It's the fastest way to get here. Probably the fastest way. Um, let us add a general here. This is my chancellor, so I can't do that. I'm going to promote it instead with Steadfast so I can fight tribal units better. I'll sneak my scout here so I can see better. All right, I see what we're up against. We're up against one unit. I think I can nab this for the Empire. Oh, my son-in-law leveled up. Uh, let's take Courage. I'm always a big fan of like stat increases. I'll take Horsebane in this case. Uh, my third in line needs to be educated. I'm just going to go ahead and put her in um, philosophy for that a plus one science per turn. Pretty valuable. Let's see, Slinger, you go into sentry mode. You're defending the city. Scout, scout. Scout did a good job. Harvest some salt from the barbarians. Throw a bit of culture into Raga. This city has completed a goal. The only downside is that um, ranches are quite expensive. Yeah, we're still embroiled in war, but in the near future, I will want a lot more workers. So, something I need to consider. Um... They want disciples and slingers. It might be good to get a slinger to defend the city. Just slowly, just slowly but surely increase my military potential. Um, and I think getting the slinger is the right play. The more military units I have, the the more, uh, the more powerful I'm interpreted as by the other civs. Yes, they cost upkeep, but I think in the long run, investing in military early actually pays dividends.
I'll probably go work in my capital because my capital can build workers relatively quickly and then I'll grab a s slinger to defend this city and then I'll send the worker over. Ooh, actually workers, if they're working in the wrong type of city, hmm, that's a point. Yeah. If they're working in the wrong kind of city, they don't do as good. And I'd have to walk this guy all the way over. I don't think that's worth it. I think... I think I build a worker here. Ugh, stop. Boom. Alright, so what happens? The end is near. One turn! Like, sun gained plus one charisma. One turn! God damn it. One turn before I was ready to 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 uh, do, a, do a war thing. Free chariot. That's value, but I really need to get divination. So unfortunately, I can't, I can't get that free chariot. Normally, I would take that free chariot, but damn. Damn it, Daniel. Just can't do it. I'm spending a lot of orders to take this. I'm even going to actually use forced march here. It's going to cost me a hundred things, but it will allow me to march this unit and take this camp. Liberate it. Gain two citizens. In Ooh, gain a warrior. Two citizens in Raga. Citizens are not good. Uh, early game. They're good in the mid game and the late game, but early game, they, they cause you problems. Potato here is famous in Canada. They're calling the guy a lost in the official federal election. Potato McWhiskey in a very derogatory way. Sorry, Potato. Okay. <laughs> Mayo. Wow. What? Can you get any civics from finding curiosities? Mm. Don't know. Uh, two citizens gain a warrior. Discontent levels suck, but I really want that warrior. The stronger I am, the better. Plus, it's a, an unaligned warrior. It belongs to my royal family, which means I can put anyone as a general in it. So this is actually a super valuable unit um, because it's not affected by the opinion of a family. So very, very powerful that I got this unit. Way, uh, getting a single, this like, seems like, oh, you got a warrior, big whoop de do. There's actually a lot of like small mechanical things. And this is again about this game. There's like a lot of these small little mechanical things that you keep, keep, keep in mind um, that make this actually a way more important thing that just happened. Uh, let's get our triangle of quarries up. Oh, plenty of stone coming in. Monkey philosophy. During one of your visits to the academy, my daughter comes to your pet monkey. So I could encourage her. To learn more about nature, I can ask to t I could take the monkey. I become a pet monkey owner. She becomes educated. Oh yeah, absolutely. She's becoming educated, and I'm taking the pet monkey owner because I'm about to die, and I don't have to deal with any of the negative consequences of owning a monkey. In this game, you can have like a little, like, pet capuchin or whatever and uh it does it it causes mischief but like i'm about to die so i'm just gonna take that take that little monkey die and I, I assume the monkey will go off into the ether unless they've like put in events that like you inherit the monkey which is gonna be really uh you know it's just gonna say it's gonna make life difficult for me uh so we just did a stone cutter in here which has slightly increased the science It might be good to get a second worker. I would like a treasury. Is there a way for me to get the civics? I don't think I'm going to be able to get this alliance. I'm devastated, dude. Devastated. I wish I could just get 19 of this. This turn would be incredible. I just there's, there's no way. Can't do it. Ah, uh, so this city. I feel like I want this city to develop. So eventually, like developing a treasury is important. I, still, I just don't understand.
I mean, Treasury 4 eventually is pretty good. Can't you sell orders? Yeah, but for gold. You know what I mean? Uh, so if I'm thinking long term here, a builder, like another worker is like the, the thing. Alternatively, if I'm looking to develop my empire a little bit, this is the move, getting some, getting another stone cutter to give me the civics I need to continue to develop the city into something really, really powerful. Get more uh, of these guys. Long-term development, I think this trapper is actually pretty based too. Um, it's plus two growth in the city. Growth is how you get citizens. So trapper it is. We're going to get that trapper. It'll take six years. Allow me to grow the city in the long run. All right. I finally have the moves now to feel comfortable to explore. The Chaldea Plain. Heal up my little scouty boy. The scout will head home too. 25 orders per turn. I'm feeling good. I need Cyrus to live one more turn. I need him to live one more turn. Oh. God damn it. I have an old ambition. I have to make a decision about whether I think it's worth going for this. Um, Assyria began construction of lighthouse. I died. Funeral. Crush my queen. Oh, Depth of Cyrus. I'm not able to pray. I'm to repay you instead. Ooh. I can reclaim the favor. Oh, that's based. I could get money or a favor. Oh my god, my economy. Yeah, it's treasury time. <laughs> it's treasury time. Woo. Okay. Uh, yeah, I absolutely, you owe me a favor. Thank you. So this forces my hand, I think. Treasury, click. Uh, same in here. Treasury, click. It just it needs to happen. I'll get that slinger, but immediately after that, it's treasury. I don't like it, but it is necessary, I think. Maybe not treasuries everywhere, but at least two treasuries, and then we can kind of like analyze that decision a little bit. Um, I need friendship with Egypt. Influence. I don't have the money to influence. I don't make enough money per turn. I don't have enough goods to sell to, as well. Snake signs. So, ugh. I can become proud. Proud seems like an interesting direction to go. I don't upset anybody. I don't spend any resources. Yeah, I'm going to become proud. Renewed hope. The birth of young Prince Freites, Persia. Prince Freites was born. My son and my heir. I can get a new court minister. I can become a pet monkey owner. No. Uh, or, or I can become romantic. Ooh, that's a lot of civics. It's a lot of civics. Twenty-eight civics per turn is an insane amount. It'll piss off pretty much everyone in the world. My tribal alliance with the Gaul is very thin, though, so I don't know if I can piss off the Gaul. In fact, my tribal alliance with the Gaul is so thin, I need to go settle their city immediately. I'll get a new court minister. She will hurt my economy even more. Oh God! <laughs> I was hoping she would give me money. Uh, so let's let's go ahead and do Settler. And I need to get this Settler over here ASAP before these guys turn on me. Um, that's just how it's got to be. Uh, can I build the urban? Do I not have two active laws? Really? Okay. 
Choose ambition. Ah, okay. Kill 15 military units. That'll be hard. There's not. I don't think there's that many military units on the map for me to kill. Build the Apadana. Now, that's possible. Honestly, I don't feel ambitious right now. I don't know if I can do any of these. Like, if we look at the Apadana. Pff, developing culture. 900 stone. 4,500 gold to build. <sighs> Like, it is really good. A minus 50% maintenance in all your cities. Like, it's actually sick as hell to get the Apadana. I really wish I could build it. There's a one-turn civics project. Oh, you're right! I completely forgot about that. There is... The repeatable council project. Oh, man. I, if I'd have remembered that, I would have ran it. Damn it. Oh, I could have got that. I could have got that. Mm. I'm going to I'm going to say I'm going to try to build the Apadana. I think that's a reasonable goal for this guy's lifetime. Um I'm going to try rush out this settler too. Try and settle this before the Gauls turn on me. What have we got militarily over here? Definitely want to add a general here, but I don't have the civics. I think I'm going to take a moment to... Actually, I don't need to dip back. You can stay out on the front. I will take my scout out. What do we got? We got a whole bunch of elite skirms. Now, my chariot will make light work of those. My slingers will have a little bit more trouble, particularly this slinger. I'll take a moment to heal on you. Alright. Stack these two units together. That's those guys handled. Oh, you know what? I did this in the wrong order. Yeah, you... We're meant to go here. Then you take over this spot. You go there. You go there. You take over this. Then you heal. Then you go there. That was what I was meant to do. Apadana. I like being able to rewind my turn. It's like super, super good. It's a really, really good part of the game. I'm not seeing really good options to do anything useful with this worker aside from chopping. For wood. Wood slowly becoming more expensive, so I think triple chopping worth the orders here. Considering that would have cost me nearly six, three hundred, uh, three hundred gold to buy all that wood, so you know, worth. Minimum friendly. Why can't I? Requires diplomat leader. Oh, dude. Need to get an ambassador. Um, how do we get an ambassador? Yeah, aristocracy. I'm, I'm working on getting it. Once I get this, I can get an ambassador and maybe get peace. So my plans have been... Like, Poorly optimized, and we're having a bit of trouble, but we should be able to survive just fine. Did I never put a general in this thing? Artabanius the Younger. Seems cool. Uh, yeah, I used up all my training, but it's okay. Oh, I can heal inside allied territory. Cool. Alright, let's go. I'm, I'm left with leftover orders now and these wars are going to be coming to a close soon so that's telling me that i'm going to want a lot more workers soon um so we can do the build-up phase of this of this game rebels have formed a chariot uh i want the gold to buy buffer time oh christ uh all right um 
Damn it. Well, I do have a warrior here. I can bring down to fight. It's doable. I don't have my slinger in the city yet. So now the important thing here is that cavalry have the route ability. So you took a pretty decent chunk of damage there. If I go here, they don't do a whole lot of damage. My warrior can damage. Chariot can route. Perfect. You can come back this way and take over for this guy in a turn or two. Yeah, I've got a huge surplus of orders now. Um, so workers, 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 workers need to start happening. Find Slayer, act as a tutor and stuff. Become intelligent or insane? All right, boys. Do we roll the dice on intelligence or insanity? That's how we're going to end the stream. Does my sister, third in line, become intelligent or insane? Let's find out. Boom. She became intelligent. Perfect. Amazing. She will make a great governess, governor soon. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, food is starting to get a little bit thin. Let's grab these um, nets. It's, uh, two culture, ten gold. Helps with my economy. Religion is spreading. Would like to spread to Raga if I could. Now what do I do with this guy? These are all going to be kind of urban tiles. I have nothing to build except maybe quarries and farms. It's a good farm there. Mine food. We go to the next unit. Uh. Fall back to the city and heal. 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 Create agent network. Ooh. Spies. Interesting. I need stone for the Apadana. Make quarries. I will be making quarries. Um, but I got to also think long term. You can't just spam quarries everywhere, right? You got to think. Who the hell established enlightenment? Wasn't I building a guy to do that exact thing? I didn't want enlightenment. I wanted a different thing. Can I change that? Come on. I think my nephew is being disobedient. Damn it. This isn't what I wanted. I wanted the other belief. Oh, that's disappointing. Anyway. Uh, yeah. Quick reshuffle, I reckon. Grab ourselves military drill. Because that'll lead to axemen. And archers. And give us access to barracks as well, which are going to be useful to increase our military production. So we'll grab... Mm, this is good, though. Having an extra law allows me to start building garrisons. It gives me access to the forum. Do I want barracks or do I want forum? 
Barracks is just so based. The extra law, though, gives me garrisons. Rally troops. Barracks, barracks, barracks. I need to, need to upgrade my military technology. Uh, I'm going to give the city culture, because advancing a city is pretty good. I'm going to call that there, though. I'm going to save this game. Uh, live stream Persia. This will be Persia turn 37. And we'll continue this tomorrow. I think we're making good progress. We've managed to stay alive very like for the first two fifths of the game. Uh, and we're potentially going to get two more cities from barbarians, which is extremely rare. Potentially three if I can get a settler over here to the Gauls. Um, I'm going to hurry that settler actually and then save the game again. Let's make sure that that happens. Uh, yeah potentially three more cities four four more cities we could get eight cities on the hardest difficulty that's insane i've never I've never gotten more than three cities um from settling on the hardest difficulty very very rare i think this is a testament to me getting better as a player and also being lucky all right i'm gonna call that the end of the stream though i love you all very much i'll see you guys next time Bye bye